right, hello everybody and welcome to what could be the game of the year, the Mound Pass League title here, up for grabs tonight as Talkwitz at home is here to host the Citrus Hill Hawks alongside Joel Diaz, Manny News here, making the call, my producer to the left of me, Tim Parker, and upstairs, the camera guy, Jonathan Silva. Joel, I was unable to sleep tonight all week, as a matter of fact, the only thing on my mind was this game, and I can assure you that on that roster on both sides, they're thinking the same thing, that this is for all the marbles right here. Oh yeah, absolutely. I've been excited for weeks about this game. I've been talking to a couple of the guys from Talkwitz and you know they've been stoked for the like, last couple of weeks as well. And uh, you definitely know that these guys are coming into this game pumped up. They know what's on the line. They know what they're fighting for. And Talkwitz, after being two and eight last year, they've got to be excited to be to even be in this position facing Citrus Hill for the league title. Yeah, talk about unfamiliar territory. They officially clinched the playoff spot for the first time in school history, but they are now not only trying to vibe for a playoff spot, which they've already done, but they can go for at least a share of a league title with a win tonight. And with an interview with the head coach, Dennis Gregovich, with the, the local paper, even he thought that that opportunity would not have happened. He knew that his team would be under the radar, but to play at this kind of level, very unexpected. Yeah, they were definitely under the radar to start this season, but uh, they're absolutely all over everyone's radar now. Citrus Hill knows who they are. They've seen what they can do, the weapons that Talkwitz brings within the offense. We've talked about it all season. Um, Citrus Hill is prepared. You know they're coming into this game, game prepared. They're undefeated both in league and overall this season. Um, Talkwitz facing a Murrieta Mesa Division II squad that's their only loss. So technically you can say they're also pretty much undefeated facing that big, big team there. Um, so it's gonna be a battle of high powered run offenses here. Yeah, both teams averaging uh, around just over 40 points a game. In fact, Tonkwitz is coming in over, nearly at 48. I mean, you, if you like run, if you like runs, obviously this would be the game here, but you talk about Tonkwitz and uh, or actually even more so Citrus Hill and who they're facing off against. Last uh, two weeks ago, uh, Bench Marino was down uh, and actually broke his scapula two weeks ago. It is unknown when his return will be. They're saying he might be out for the year, which means I really think that preparing against a team like Tonkwitz, knowing that now they may have to change their weapons a little bit here and there, it, it, it makes it that much more difficult to prepare against a team like Tonkwitz where you know that Blanco, who does have a lot of experience coming into the game, you never know what you're going to get. Either a big run by the, by the, tr by the dual runs by either Peters or, uh, or Jonte Price or the arm of Fernando Blanco. Yeah, definitely. Fernando Blanco is like the wild card here on this offense. You know, it was unexpected um, coming into last week when you had to fill in for Benjamin Moreno, and we saw that he can definitely air that ball out. He definitely has accuracy. He has distance. He's got that strong arm. Uh, we're, hopefully we will be able to see that here tonight, uh, even though they may go with the run more often than not. Takowitz here electing the kickoff, and they will recover on the touch by Citrus Hill. What a way to start it there. Takowitz watching the bounce. They take it, and they'll move that ball the other way. We expected it. We know that Citrus Hill did not. Yeah, Talkwitz with a great start to this ball game. We saw that they did this last week um, against West Valley, and it's they were successful a couple times to start the game. And uh, as we see here, they're going to be able to start with their offense on the field, and that's crucial because in the second half, you know they're also going to be receiving the ball. Yes, and that is big. Obviously, for Talkwitz, they've been doing that all year. They've been playing strategy, and it's worked to their advantage here on first down and 10. Fernando Blanco in the shotgun, stays in the pocket, fires up to the near side, looking for Stewart, one-handed catch, no, dropped. And incomplete, would have had a chance to make his highlight on SportsCenter, but he could not bring it in. That would have been two highlights in a row there, man. He first to kick off, and then a great pass from Fernando Blanco that was right at Michael Stewart, just a little over his head, out of bounds. Um, but as you can see, Fernando Blanco is definitely part of this high-powered offense that Talkwitz has. He's a great replacement for Benj the injured Benjamin Moreno. Um, definitely wishing Moreno the best, but I think Blanco is going to do a great job here tonight. On second down, a whistle and a legal procedure called against the offense as uh, Tavares Tolton, the 
was the culprit on that play. That'll back him up about, about five. And again, this Talkwitz offense, uh, they've got a lot of weapons. And, you know, even though losing, Blanc, uh, losing uh, Benjamin Moreno, they have the arm of Blanco, like you, like you mentioned. But obviously two plays in, we have not even called Jonte Price's number yet as he's in the backfield here. Second down and 15, stays in pocket. It'll be handed off to Jonte up the middle, trying to spin away from a defender but it get, instead gets knocked down for about a four yard gain, setting up a third down and long. Yeah, uh, as you can see, going to Jonte Price here, you mentioned they hadn't gone to him yet, but they went to him on this one. But you can see that Citrus Hills is prepared for him. Um, they definitely stacked the line on that one and were able to hold him to only a uh, short gain. Third down here and 11 yards to go. Blanco takes a snap, drops back, staying in the pocket, firing up the middle, looking for Esperis. Under his feet, incomplete. Now setting up fourth down by the looks of it. I think they might be going. Obviously, it's not deep enough for a punt, but obviously far enough for a field goal. So the offense will stay on the field regardless if they can't get it. That was big to recover the kickoff on the fumble. Starting this drive here, starting the quarter as a matter of fact. Fourth down and 11 at the 32. Dropping back, Blanco firing up the middle. Can't find a receiver, incomplete turnover on downs. Small victory though nonetheless, as they'll actually take a little bit of time off the clock, 49 seconds to be exact. And the offense will start the other way for Citrus Hill at their own 31. Yeah, that was a tough drive there for Talkwitz. Um, as you can see, we had Blanco aired out a couple times, or three times on that drive. Um, but he was just a little short uh, on each one except for the Michael Stewart pass. You can see these corners are playing really tight man defense against his receivers right now. Um, they know the weapons that Talkwitz has. They know what they have to do to stop Fernando Blanco to get getting that ball to the receivers. On the run here by KJ Young up along the far side trying to find some openings and instead gets shoestring tackled by Talkwitz. 13-yard gain, enough for a first down. And, you know, I mentioned K.J. Young, their, their elite uh, running back uh, for their squad, or actually one of their elite wide receivers. P.J. Walker is actually their, their main tailback. Uh, you know, this team can mix it up both ways. Not known for really putting a lot of points. Botch that fumble, but it'll be a whistle. Dead play, I believe it'll be an uh, false start call. You know, this team is known for more their, for their defense rather than their offense, although you got a runner and, uh, and P.J. Walker who's rushed for about 1,200 yards this season. K.J. Young and James Zoon off the arm of Trevor Hodge has actually done pretty well, but really it's their bread and butter has been their defense all year long. On first down and 15 after the run, the tailback P.J. Walker up the middle, losing about one. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, they have a good weapons here in the backfield. Their rushing yards per game is about 269, um, which is a lot higher than their passing yards per game. So you can see that they're a very run heavy defense. KJ Young offense. with the reception gets tackled just across the first down marker. A ton of tarp falling onto the field as soon as Young broke free. Awaiting the call right here. This might be a holding call depending on, yes it is. Bring it back, 10, obviously. The hole by the offense uh, gave him a lot of room, KJ Young, for the run, and that'll back him up for a second down and a very, very long drive. Yeah, that was a good uh, good break there for, for Talkwitz defense. They're giving up a couple big runs here, but with the penalty on that play, that gives them another chance to get their defense together and try to stop the run. Second down at about 17, firing it up to on the sweep is KJ Young, who takes it back to the start of the first down marker. He's tackled at the 48, and a gain of about eight now, setting up third down and long. And this will be a big test, as we've talked about, for this Talkwitz defense. Uh, as you mentioned, rushing for nearly 270 per game. It'll be interesting how they will stop the running game, led by P.J. Walker. Third down and long, Trevor Hodge, the quarterback, stays in pocket, firing it up to the middle. It is complete to Bradley, who gets tackled at the 40. About a 12-yard gain, enough to move the chains. Yeah, that was definitely a touchdown-saving tackle there by Christian Bertrand. Um, there was a lot of green in front of the, re the receiver for Citrus Hill, but uh, Christian was able to get a strong tackle there and bringing him down. So after the first down here, first down and 10, a reverse handed off to K.J. Young up along the 
near side, trying to juke over a few tackles. Down at the 20, there is a flag on the play, and as he tackled inside the 10, down at the 8, and I think this will be brought back, an illegal shift called against the offense. That, another huge break for the Talkwitz defense, because that was a huge gain there for uh, Citrus Hill, and uh, another flag here against, uh, against the Citrus Hill offense, and that's gonna bring them back. It's making it uh, difficult for them to advance the ball. Yeah, a smart move there by Talkwitz. They didn't let up anyway. Had a feeling that it might have been a free play on Tonkwitz's side defensively, but uh, they let a lot of a, a lot of a game there. They kept a, some holes open, but like you said, luckily brought it back five. They're on the illegal shift, so first down and 15 under 9:05 to go here in the opening quarter. Trevor Hodge here, the quarterback for Citrus Hill, number one in the Eastern Division, takes a snap. He'll sneak it up the middle, spins off a tackle and then gets dogpiled at the 35. A beautiful move there by Hodge to evade a tackler. Would have been a, a no gain on the play instead and got creative and took it for five. Yeah, Hodge on the RG3 right there a little bit. Um, got a nice big gain on first down for his offense and uh, now they got a second and five. So here on second down and five again, Citrus Hill coming at eight and no. Tied for first in the Mountain Pass League with Talkwitz. Both teams vying for at least a share of a league title. Hodge dropping back, firing up the middle as he's tackled. A lot of holding on the play, and there is a flag. Yeah, that was, uh, you could see the pressure there from the Talkwitz defense on that play. That's the second time that uh, they put Hodge on the ground. But um, a big break there for Citrus Hill, I believe, because it, I think it was a flag against the defense. Oh, it's a flag pass interference called against the offense. That's a play that could have gone either way. You see Tavares Talton getting a lot of jersey on, on the receiver, but they're saying that the main culprit was the offense. So turn of events here, bring him back 10 yards, and that'll reset here second down and 20. Yeah, that's four flags against Citrus Hill just on this drive to start this game for them. Um, that's definitely not a way you want to go. So it is a 15-yard penalty correction, and he lost a down, as a matter of fact. So third down and 20. This completely changes the drive. Already in a passing mode situation here with two receivers left and right spread out. Single back. Hodge takes a snap. Avoids the sack, throws it down to Walker, who gains about eight, but well short of a first down. Yeah, Hodge again, seeing him on the ground, that's three times that the Talkwitz defense gets to him. Um, they were able to, you know, get that little screen play out uh, for a short gain, but now it's uh, fourth down. So I think we'll see a punt here from the Citrus Hill offense. Great move here, great work by the uh, Talkwitz defense to you know, obviously take control of that penalty on, on second down and with that a big victory as they force Citrus Hill on the punt. You got Tavares, or Boyd, correction, inside the 10 of their own territory. He'll let the ball bounce. It takes a huge Takwitz bounce that runs right into the defender as it's down at the 18 yard line. That's where the Takwitz drive will start 7.27 to go. Joel, obviously, one drive on each side, your thoughts so far? Yeah, it's definitely a victory there for both defenses. They were both able to stop these really high-powered offenses. As we were talking about earlier, we were looking at the stats here. Um, Talkwitz is getting about 48 points a game, and uh, Citrus Hill is getting about 40. That's definitely high-powered on both sides. So it's big for these defenses uh, facing each other. Um, trying to keep that score down, and we see a little victory on each side for the defense. Blanco takes a snap. It'll pitch it off to Jonte Price, who can't get any running room. He's tackled right back at the line of scrimmage. So that'll be no gain here, second down. In fact, he lost a yard, so second down now and 11 instead. And, you know, already looking at this five minutes in, it's still hard to predict, but it could, you could look at it either two ways. Uh, still early in, early in the game, but you could see it as a slugfest or maybe one of the lower scoring games we will see all year long. Blanco here in the shotgun, second down with a single back, three receivers to his right hand side. Takes a snap, stays in pocket, looking for Stewart, passes over. 
His head cannot make the grab incomplete. Stewart had his hands all over that ball, but uh, unfortunately he couldn't come down with it. But another great pass by Fernando Blanco. You see that. Um, I, it seems like he actually stepped out of bounds on that one. But uh, Fernando Blanco, you can see that he's got he's got that strength to, uh, to put air under that ball and get it to his receivers. Yeah, he's got a very quick arm. And obviously against the defensive line of Citrus Hill, you got to go quick. Only have about at most three seconds to get the pass off. Stays in pocket as it collapses as he'll run back to the line of scrimmage and actually get brought down for a two-yard sack there. And that'll end the drive. You're three and out for the Takwitz offense. Yeah, another victory there for the Citrus Hill defense. And as you mentioned, this may be a slugfest, but as things are going right now, it looks like it's going to be a very, very low-scoring game. So a couple of drives that have ended uh, rather quickly. The second drive for Talkwitz this time goes for a three and out, setting up to punt. Ball is kicked away, a low line drive. It'll take a big Talkwitz bounce into Citrus Hill territory. I believe it might be a net of about 40 yards. It'll be down at the 37 yard line of Citrus Hill and that's where the drive will start. We'll take a quick timeout right here. This is Friday Night Football right here on PlayOnSports.com. Tonight's game is being brought to you by our title sponsor, Trinity Energy Solutions. Trinity Energy Solutions, a green energy company, specializes in the, in the installation of power shaver energy saving systems. For more information, find TES online at www.trinityenergysolutions.org or call them at 951-654-0824. Trinity Energy Solutions, saving energy across the world. There it goes, the quarterback Trevor Hodge there on first down, gaining of about five on the quarterback sneak. So that'll set up here second down and five. And you know, already looking at this game halfway through the first quarter, it's got a different feel compared to the first eight games for uh, for Tokowitz. And you can just sense that there's a lot riding on this line just based on how, how conservative both teams are playing right now. They're on second down, there goes the quarterback, Trevor Hodge. Stiff arms a tackler, he's at the near side, inside the 10, and he'll take it all the way in for a 60-yard touchdown. What an incredible run there by Hodge. He had me fooled. I thought the running back had the ball and that they'd brought him down. But out of nowhere, you see Hodge run past that defensive line, past the secondary. The huge stiff arm. If it wasn't for that stiff arm, he wouldn't have gotten the touchdown, but a great, great job there by Hodge. A nice sell there on the play action as well who fooled off the handoff to P.J. Walker and found some open running room up along the near side. And Citrus Hill will draw first blood. 5.29 to go in the first quarter here as Citrus Hill setting up for the extra point. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. And it is a good two plays on that drive as it's capped off by the 60-yard run by Trevor Hodge. We'll take a quick timeout right here. A 7-0 ball game with the Hawks on top. You are watching. Friday Night Football right here on PlayOnSports.com. Our first quarter is brought to you by My Mama's Pizza. Located on the corner of Sanderson and Devonshire, My Mama's Pizza is open daily from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Right now, you can get a large one-topping pizza, a large salad, and four soft drinks for just $22.99. Take advantage of this limited-time special. Visit My Mama's Pizza today because nobody feeds you like Mama. You know, it's funny because we mention this ad every week, and you could just never get enough of that Mama's Pizza. That's right, Manny. I love My Mama's Pizza. Uh, I mean, that that that, uh, that luscious mozzarella cheese on top with pepperoni. You got a, a large salad, four drinks. It's, it's making me salivate. Yes, I can definitely <laughs> feel my salivation starting right now. <laughs> You're making me hungry. Uh, in the meantime here, back in action with Citrus Hill on top by a score of 7-0, capped off again by the 60-yard touchdown run by Trevor Hodge on the quarterback keeper. So the Hawks will set up to kick right back to Tonkowitz. A high kick, only going about 50 yards, recovered up along the far side. There goes Tavares, who gets taken down at the 31-yard line. Again, that's where the drive will start here for the Titans. Yeah, let's see what uh, what the Talkwitz offense has in store here on this drive. They haven't been able to get much going on. Um, we've seen Henry Blanco aired a few, aired out a few times. Jonte Price, I believe, has only two touches today. Um, and both have been for a net of about two yards. So uh, let's see what Talkwitz can do. We know that Citrus Hill is prepared for Jonte. Uh, let's see if they can use their other weapons effectively. Blanca here back in the shotgun, first down, handed off right back to Derek Peters, who 
runs towards the middle of the field and gains about three, maybe four on the play. He's taken down at, they're gonna say he's down at the 39. Uh, questionable spot, nonetheless, nonetheless, it'll set up here second down and seven. Back in the no huddle here. Two receivers to his right hand side, Blanco back in the shotgun. Clock here taken under five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Takes a snap, stays in pocket, dropping back, throwing it up to Tavares over his head, out of reach, incomplete. Henry Blanco again going to the sidelines there to his quick receivers. Unfortunately, that was a little bit over his head. Uh, Tavares wanted that ball. You can see he wanted that ball. He reached up for it, but uh, just a little, a little too far out of his reach. Right now, you can just tell that uh, Takowitz is trying to see what mistakes uh, this Hawk defense is forcing. And they've made a little bit, but right now you can just tell that Takowitz is kind of toying around and seeing what they can do with them. On third down, quick pass up to Tavares, who makes the catch. He's near the first down marker. They're going to give him the forward progress. Clock is stopped, 444 to go. Fourth down, maybe? Not sure. The marker, the line of scrimmage marker is at the 41 and that's where the first down marker is they're gonna bring out the change here for a measurement and I think he got it it looks like he might be he might have reached just enough for the first we'll yeah. have to wait and see yeah I think he I think he has a first um, that was a great play there uh, seeing the wide open slant to Tavares and they definitely got the first down about a half football over the first down marker a beautiful Quick drop pass on the slant down to Tavares, and uh, you know at the same time a beautiful job of holding on to the ball too. So the clock here stop, waiting to set up the chains here. 4:44 to go. You got a line formation up along the near side with three receivers set up. Single back behind him. Throw out to Michael Stewart. Stewart jukes and then gets taken down back to the line of scrimmage and no more. So no gain on the play, second and 10. Yeah, Citrus Hill snuffed out that wide receiver screen, that bubble over there on the near, on the near side really quickly uh, prevented them from getting any yardage. Ball here, back at the 42. They're saying they got a half a yard maybe. Ball handed off to Peters. Running along the near side, can't get anything there. Maybe one on the play, and right now the running game Seen a couple of handoffs here and there. The biggest gain they've gotten is about three yards. It's been really lackluster so far. Yeah, as we mentioned, uh, both of these teams are coming in very, very prepared for that run game. And we've been able to see that thus far uh, with the Citrus Hill defense. Three receivers spread out up along the far side. Here is Blanco dropping back. Quick pass. Looking for Tavares. Was not expecting the ball. Was in position for it as it's thrown to nobody incomplete. And that'll bring out the punting unit. Yeah, that was a that was a tough break there for uh, Talkwitz. You could see Tavares; uh, he, he could have been open for that pass, but he did not know that the ball was coming coming to him. Uh, I think maybe Henry Blanco threw it over to him a little bit too early. Uh, the timing wasn't wasn't right there between the quarterback and his receiver. Titans here setting up to punt, 3.42 to go here in the first quarter. Ball kicked away, it's a short high kick. It will take a short bounce up along the sideline as it's out of bounds at the 38. About a net of maybe 15 yards on the play. Seven nothing ball game where Citrus Hill will start at, the, at their own 38 and a half yard line. We'll keep it right here and Joel kind of expected this uh, to open up this first quarter right now, talk, which is trying to see what they can do against this uh, Citrus Hill defense. And so far, even though they've got nothing to work with, it's unusual to see them not put up any points here in the first quarter. Yeah, absolutely. Normally you see talk, putting up touchdowns really, really quickly in the first quarter within a couple plays, but so far they've had three drives without any success. On first down, the option hands it off. It's a gain of 11. Well enough there for the first down with the ball brought up at midfield. Right now, Citrus Hill really taking over this game so far, nine minutes in. First down and 10 here at midfield. Here is Hodge. Handing it off to the running back who takes it for about a four, three yard gain correction. So it'll be second down here and seven with about exactly three to go here in the first quarter. Back out of the no huddle. 
Three receivers to the left-hand side. Hodge here in the shotgun single back where Walker stands. Again, a quick handoff, and there is the defensive line. Nine minutes in, and the Beast has finally awoken. And there's that, as we like to call it, steel wall by, uh, by the Talkwitz defense. They're doing a great job. The steel curtain, my apologies. Steel curtain by Talkwitz doing a great job there, um, bringing them down for a loss. So a loss of about one. They'll take it anyway here. Third down and eight yards to go. Got the offense spread out here for Takowitz. Two receivers left and right. Single slot. Here on the option setup, here is Hodge. Can only get four yards on the play. Fourth down and five, and most likely decision time for head coach Eric Zolmalt of Citrus Hill. Fourth and five again, or extra correction, fourth and four as a matter of fact. Looks like the offense here is staying on the field. In a game like this, it's pretty obvious that you want to have the ball in your hands as long as possible. Three receivers spread up along the foot near side. Takwitz again sniffing that play on the quarterback keeper. They take out Trevor Hodge on the keeper. One yard gain, well short of the first down. Move that ball the other way. Yeah, definitely. That was a great stop there um, by the Takwitz defense. You see they gave up seven points already, but they're still fighting uh, to contain the Citrus Hill uh, running game. and. Uh, I'd like to say this game is uh, the unstoppable force meets the immovable object when it comes to both defenses. Now let's see what Tokwitz can do to respond out of the big defensive stop. First down and 10 here at their own 44. Blanco here, handing it up to Price, who gets stuffed. He actually ran back to the line of scrimmage, but again, that Citrus Hill line, reading that play rather well. Yeah, the defense was on top of Price in less than two seconds there. Uh, Price was at least able to use some strength in his legs to get back to the line of scrimmage, but uh, the Citrus Hill is definitely uh, sniffing out all these run plays. Second down and 10, an official's timeout as uh, you have an equipment issue as uh, Derek Peters came off the field. Devin Howard will come in here for Tokwitz. Clock here running now under 1.20 to go here in this first quarter. Blanco in the shotgun, Price in the backfield. Three receivers left-hand side. Stays in pocket, throws it out to Stewart. Pass is caught. He's got the first down, taken down at the 43. A big gain there for the Tokwitz offense. Moving those chains and heading in to Citrus Hill territory. Yeah, earlier in the uh Previous three drives, you saw uh, Fernando Blanco air it out pretty deep, but now he's going with the short passes, and we see that it's been successful uh, on this short pass to Michael Stewart and earlier a short pass to uh, Tavares Talton. Here is Jonte Price on the handoff. Can't get anything going here as he found a hole, but it quickly collapsed. No gain on the play here, second down. Yeah, that was, uh, again, Citrus Hill's He's holding back Jonte Price um, and Derek Peters. They're both struggling right now, getting any yards. Uh, we have a very, very strong defensive line in the Citrus Hill defense, and they've been able to read every single run play thus far. Here on second down, staying in the pocket again, Michael Stewart trying to get the pass, but it's picked off. Citrus Hill taking it the other way. It's a pick six. Touchdown, Citrus Hill. Wow, and uh, definitely a ball, an interception that should not have happened. Uh, Michael Stewart was open. Fernando Blanco saw the window, but the window closed very, very quickly. He still forced the ball in that direction. And as you can clearly see, that was a pick six for Citrus Hill. Stewart open, but again, that Citrus Hill secondary reading the eyes of the quarterback and they snuffed it, got the hand on the ball, and they took it the other way for about 60 yards. And that's a big momentum shift, a big momentum killer, to be exact here for this Citrus Hill, or correction, for this Takowitz offense. A 13 to nothing ball game now here, pending the extra point. Yeah, Takowitz was starting to move the ball on offense here in this last drive, and as you mentioned, definitely a momentum killer. 
uh, with that pick six, now making this a two possession game. The snap, the hold, the kick is up and it is a good. There's no time on the clock as that interception wastes away the final seconds of this first quarter. An interception return for a touchdown ends the first quarter of play. It's a 14-0 ball game. We'll take a timeout right here. This is, once again, Friday Night Football right here on PlayOnSports.com, where high school sports lives right here. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups, like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. 14-0 ball game here at Tonkowitz uh, with by far their biggest deficit this season since that game against Murrieta Mesa. And it's funny because the opponents, the opponents that they've really faced off against uh, uh, hasn't been at this kind of caliber. Ever since that Murrieta Mesa game, they've really fa faced some opponents that they can take on rather well. And this is obviously... Even though, you know, obviously don't want to take away the, their other uh, teams that they face off this year, this is obviously by far their toughest opponents they've faced all year long. Yeah, definitely. Coming into this game, you had that big game feel, and you know every single one of these Talkwitz players had that tension inside them saying, we know this is a big game. They may be a little nervous, as we've been able to see so far tonight, um, but they need, to, they need to shake that off. They need to get their act together. We've seen Talkwitz defense be incredible we've seen the offense be incredible it's just as you mentioned the caliber of opponent is uh is much higher than they've faced so far this season citrus hill kicking off at the by the looks of it it will be at the 25 yard line possibly if not deeper than that after the excessive celebration call after the touchdown in fact, it'll be positioned at the 12 and a half yard line. So, Takowitz may have a chance to get some good field position. It'll take a bounce right up at midfield. Returned, taken back at the 41 yard line, setting up for good field position. And right now, if you're a Takowitz, I would assume that you would want to score quick because obviously for you don't want to be trading off drives where you don't score and you give Citrus the ball back and giving them a chance to extend the lead. Yeah, uh, Talkwood's coming into this drive here. They're starting with great field position. They're going to be starting in Citrus Hill territory. Uh, they need to make something out of this. They need to put points on the board. Uh, they need a touchdown, basically. They don't want to lose this game. They need to score quickly. We've seen them score quickly. They have that um, no huddle offense that they like to use. Uh, let's see if they're actually going to use that on this particular drive. Blanca here back in the shotgun, first down and 10. Two receivers left and right, single back, and that's Jonte Price behind him. DeVars here, call up in the motion. Ball handed off here to Price up the middle. Price can't get much of anything there on the play. If anything, he took it for about half a yard. Second down and most likely nine and a half. Again, Jonte Price, who's come in with 1,600 rushing yards on the air, has been limited to just under 20 tonight. Yeah, Price has gone nowhere in this game. Same goes with Peters. Um, this Hawks defense has just been very, very effective against the run. Second down here and about nine to go. Dual back behind Blanco. Looking to pass, complete to Asparis. Out at the 30. And I think that will be enough to move the chains for a first down. Yes, it will. Refs are positioned. That'll move the chains. Yeah, that was a great read there by uh, Fernando Blanco. It was it was perfect to have um, to have uh, split backs on that play uh, because he was able to get that extra blocking to help uh, help with the pressure from this defense, and he was able to find a wide open Sean Asparis uh, for the first down. On the handoff again. Up the middle, no gain on the play. No, actually, they're going to say it's about three yards. They're going to give him forward progress here. Second down and seven yards to go here. Clock taking under 10.45 to go here in the opening quarter. Back out of the no huddle right here. Second down and actually about nine. They didn't give him much of the forward progress. Dual back behind Blanco. 
Single receiver left and right. Stays in pocket. Looking for Asparis, but it's well over. Uncatchable, incomplete. Yeah, they went back to the well on that one again um, with the dual backs and, and the pass to Sean Asparis, but this time there was double coverage on that play, so there wasn't really a window for Blanco to complete that pass to Asparis, and uh, as you can see, he, he overthrew his receiver. Third down here and nine yards to go. Again with the dual back, single receiver left and right, a whistle. And I believe it will be a timeout called against Tokwitz. Or timeout by Tokwitz, correction. Keep it right here, 10 20 to go, and obviously uh, a much needed timeout to kind of calm the nerves here of this Tokwitz offense. Uh, they have been one for four on third down conversions, and one of the third downs was returned for a pick six. Obviously, a chance to kind of ease the pain and have head coach Dennis Gregovich to kind of bring his troops back in. Yeah, definitely. You know Gregovich wants to get into the end zone as soon as possible. Um, we know he likes to call trick plays. We know he likes to run the no huddle. We know that he likes to move the ball very quickly down the field. So let's see what he's going to draw up here after this timeout. Almost every time he calls a timeout in the middle of a drive, you know he's going to draw up something great, uh, something, uh, you know, a little trick up his sleeve to keep the Citrus Hill defense on their toes, and let's see uh, what they're going to come out with after this timeout. Yeah, like you said, Joel, it'd be in interesting to see if uh, he's got something to brewing here on this third down play. Third down and nine yards to go. Single back to where Jonte Price stands. Two receivers and left and right. Staying in the pocket, quickly collapsing, firing it up to Asparis off his shoulder pad. And drops, they complete. Would have been a beautiful play, wide open on the catch, but Asparis could not hang on. Yeah, Blanco saw a wide open Asparis on that one. He felt the pressure closing in around him. The pocket was closing in around him, but uh, he put that ball right in Sean Asparis' uh, range, but uh, Sean Asparis couldn't come down with that one. Obviously a four down situation. Fourth down and nine at the Citrus Hill 30 yard line. A whistle and an offside call as uh, you see the defender on the line, Stefan Van Hook jump over, an encroachment penalty. Encroachment there uh, helping the Talkwitz offense move the ball up a little bit. It's still fourth down, but it makes it just a little bit easier to get that first. At the 25 yard line, moving them five yards close to that first down. Fourth down and five. Javante Price in the backfield. Blanco takes a snap, looking for a receiver, far side. Tavares, does it hang on? My goodness! Right over the defender for the Tuckwitz touchdown! Oh my God. Talton, Tavares Talton with an incredible catch there. I thought it was picked off. He was able to get that ball in his hands, bobbled it a little bit in the air, fighting for the ball with the defender, came down with it in the end zone. That's the big play that Talkwitz offense needed right now. And even on fourth down, they went for the big play and they got it. Yeah, they went all or nothing. Would not expect something like that, especially when you've only got five yards to get at least a first down. The snap, the hold, the kick is up, and a good. Tavares Holton with Stickham on his hand, snags the ball out from the defender into the corner of the end zone, and it's a 14-7 ball game. We'll take a timeout right here. This is Friday Night Football right here on PlayOnSports.com. Greenleaf Gardening and Landscaping is a proud sponsor of tonight's second quarter. Located at 42337 Santee Court, Greenleaf Gardening and Landscaping is your one-stop shop for your outdoor needs. Call Hemet's Gardening and Landscaping experts today at 951-927-3693. Greenleaf, for all of your gardening and landscaping needs. I'm telling you, Joel, if that touchdown does not change the game, I don't know what will. What a great snag there by Tolton Tavares who right over the secondary of Citrus Hill found a gift and he took it in for six. Yeah, definitely huge play there for Tavares uh, for this talk with offense. This puts them on the board, cuts the lead in half. Uh, you can feel the momentum shift just a little bit as we see uh, 
Oh, but speaking of momentum, there goes the kickoff return. A backwards lateral. And that is a touchdown there for Citrus Hill. On the backwards lateral. There's Up to the corner, there is a flag on the play though. This could be crucial. The Talkwood sideline saying that it's against Citrus Hill. Yeah, uh, th this flag on the play could go either way. Uh, we couldn't really see what what happened. Um, but <laughs> speaking of momentum shifter, that was a, another momentum killer there for Talkwitz if that touchdown does go on the board for the Hawks. Here's the call by the head judge. It is a sideline warning issued. So I believe the touchdown will stand. Yes, it is. Sideline warning called against Citrus Hill, so put up six more points on the board for the Hawks. Yeah, that was a crucial play there by the Hawks special teams. Definitely did not expecting that uh, was the talk with special teams, and, and they were able to take it all the way for the score, making this now, again, uh, a two-possession game. So what a huge swing created here by this Hawka football team, giving up seven points on a beautiful pass from Blanco to Tavares. It's turned around completely by the special teams of uh, Citrus Hill. Setting up for the extra point, the snap, the hold, the kick is up and it is good. We'll keep it right here. Under 10 to go here in this First half, a 21-7 ball game. Both of us did not see that coming. Talkwitz had a great chance to make one or two tackles and stop him down midfield, but instead, you just saw that special team swat left and right off the defenders, and they took it in rather easily to bring those six points right back. Yeah, it feels like, uh, like the wind just got knocked out of the stadium here on that play. I mean, uh, it, it just came out of nowhere after a huge play by Tavares Talton. Uh, the Hawks retaliate with a great play on special teams, uh, keep, you know, keeping their offense on off the field. And and now talk with, uh, you know, the, the momentum's not on their side anymore. They have to try to fight again, fight fight against this very difficult Citrus uh, Hill defense to try to get back into the end zone and again cut it to one possession. Yeah, and the big thing too is obviously. Uh, uh, big reason why Citrus Hill did score was because of the unsportsmanlike conduct uh, on the second kickoff uh, return, which set him up for great field position. But this time around, uh, Citrus Hill positioned at the 40-yard line to kick it off, so most likely it'll pin him down deep. Line drive kick, taking one hop and two hops it. Here return up along the near side. Here's Michael Stewart at the 40 and then gets taken down by the knees at the 42. So about 58 yards away from the end zone. Let's see how Citrus Hill will respond. Yeah, and you know Michael Stewart, as soon as he got his hands on that ball, you knew he wanted to retaliate with the, with the special teams touchdown there. Um, but even, even still a great run back, was able to get it to their own 41 yard line. And this does give them a pretty good field position to start this drive. So 9.50 to go here in this first half. First down and 10 at the 41-yard line, as a matter of fact. Again with the duel back behind Blanco on the shotgun. Ball handed off. No, it's a quarterback keeper where Blanco will take it for about a two-yard gain. It's going to be, no, correction, a three-yard gain, as a matter of fact, to give him the forward progress here, second down and seven. And don't be surprised to see Blanco air it out here on this drive. We know they want that big play, and he, we know he has that arm to do it. On second down, the handoff here to Price, who again only may, oh, wow. Slips right through a bunch of tackles and dives near the first down marker. They might say he even got it. Yes, it is. Wow. Unbelievable. Jonte Price, using that strength, fell forward just enough. 
for the first down now. We thought he would be about four or five yards short, and he fell forward about four or five <laughs> yards for that first down. So a timeout here called by Citrus Hill, their first of the half. We'll take a quick timeout as well, a 21-7 ball game. 9.15 to go here in, the, in this first half of play. This is Friday Night Football right here on PlayOnSports.com. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. 9.15 to go here in this first quarter. Citrus Hill calling timeout and right now talk with... Uh, we're down by a score of 21 to seven with the ball on offense after the great run there, the unexpected seven yard gain, which was well enough for a first down there by Jonte Price, putting the ball here into Citrus Hill territory. Ball here at the 48 and a half yard line, single back where Derek Peter stands. Two receivers split off left and right on the slot. Dropping back, staying in the pocket, looking for Mitorius Boyd. A big hit there by the secondary and Jonathan Boyd, and that'll draw a flag. Unsportsmanlike called against the defense. That's a big no-no. Yeah, that was, a, that was a big break there for Tockwitz. I don't, I don't know what the Citrus Hill defender was doing there. I think he was taunting him. But um, it was a very, very big hit on my Torius Boyd. Um, he would have come down with that ball if it wasn't for the hit. But a big mistake there by the defense drawing that flag. There was no need for that. It was a great stop. And now you're giving them a first down plus an extra 15 yards. Yeah, you talk about a play where, you know, it would have obviously forced out an incomplete pass, but the unnecessary on sportsman like, here's a chance where Takwitz can't take advantage. And they have done so off of plays like this. At the 34-yard line, Blanco throwing to Stewart. Passes, caught, no, picked off. On the snag, James Uten, who gets in front of Michael Stewart. And that is the third, inter correction, the second interception thrown by Blanco's arm. Yeah, that was a great read there by the defender. Uh, Blanco just under through. Stewart on that play, um, and it fell right into the defender's hands there. Stewart tried to fight for it, but uh, it went for naught. And now Citrus Hill's offense is back back on the field. And again, the wind knocked out of the Talkwitz drive on that. After the unsportsmanlike a chance to maybe regain control, instead they went all or nothing, and instead it went into the hands back of the Hawks. On first down, the running back gaining about maybe four yards on the play, setting up here second down and six, and obviously expecting a game, you know, something like this where Takwitz would be struggling here and there, but uh, it's really just been, a, they haven't made very many mistakes, but the mistakes that they've made, which have obviously been very few, you can tell that those points on the scoreboard have come from the errors by by Tokwitz. He had a great stop there by Tokwitz on, on defense um, where it was able to prevent him from getting more than just a couple yards. So this is a big, big third down play for the Tokwitz defense. They need to get a stop here. Um, Citrus Hill, I don't think, would go for it on fourth down being so close to their own end zone. So you know Tokwitz is going to try to get this stop. Third down here on the sweep. There goes the running back. And P.J. Walker, who turns on the Jets, taking off into the end zone. Touchdown, P.J. Walker. The 1,200-yard running back. Takes it in for six. A flag on the play, though. P.J. Walker with a great run, took it all the way. This flag might bring it back if the, if it is a hold this will bring it back and wipe off that touchdown that's definitely what Tockwitz is hoping for here and right now you get to see the Citrus Hill offense in, in back in their territory all four referees here conferring 
And I think they're going to say it is a touchdown as everyone's heading down to the other side of the end zone. Let's see what the call is right here. They're going to say the touchdown is good. But not sure what the call is, though. It might be another sideline warning, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think it was a second sideline warning against Citrus Hill. Remember, CIF rule state after four sideline warnings, the coach is ejected. And e everything after the second one, I believe, will draw a flag and a yardage penalty. Regardless, the touchdown, though, still stands. 7.50 to go here in the first half. A 27-7 ball game here pending the extra point. P.J. Walker with the 70-yard touchdown run. Going nearly untouched. Broke off a tackle and just found uh, Paydirt on the kick. It's up and good. We'll keep it right here. A 21-point lead here for Citrus Hill. And right now as we are standing in front of this, uh, the Takwitz crowd, you can just tell that they are just a little bit shell-shocked. Yeah, they're... Uh the stadium got pretty quiet. Normally, they're a pretty raucous crowd. Crowd, they're always behind their team. But right now, you can you can just feel the silence um, after that big big run by P.J. Walker. Now making this a three possession game, we have yet to see Talkwitz uh, with such a big deficit this season, and it seems that they're taking taking off uh, some yardage on the kickoff on the penalty. So after the sideline warning, they're going to say it's a 15-yard penalty as it'll be kicked off from the 25. Remember, it's their second sideline warning called four sideline warnings, and head coach uh, Eric Zomalt will have to head uh, to the showers early. A 21-point lead here. Again, Takowitz, uh has been down this road before. They've come back and cut the deficit. That game to mention was against Murrieta Mesa, one of the top teams out of Division Two. Ball kicked up as it bounces its way into the end zone for the touchback. Yeah, that's a big boot there by Diego Sendejas, the kicker for Citrus Hill, uh, kicking that all the way into the end zone. Very, very powerful leg there. But um, th this talk, talk with definitely needs that big play you saw the last drive they went for that big play for that big touchdown in that pass to michael stewart but it came down they came down with an interception um let's see if they continue to go and air it out that way uh hopefully fernando blanco could put that those two interceptions behind him and not lose any confidence to air it out to his receivers first down and 10 here's blanco back in the shotgun two receivers split off left and right the handoff here to Jonte Price, again, no running room. Runs right into the line. And it looks to be a gain of about one. Second down and nine in this running game. Aside from the eight yard run by Price, since then it's just been rather dead. Yeah, it's been difficult for them to get any yardage on the run. Normally they average about 312 rushing yards per game and they're not even close to that. Um, they've barely been able to get anything tonight. Second down, Tavares looking for a chance at a catch. No, incomplete, but he got a lot of jersey tucked on him, and that'll draw the P.I. call. On the play, Jack Brown was the culprit on the pass interference penalty. So give him 15 yards in the play and a fresh set of downs. Yeah, uh, that's a break that the Talkwitz offense needed. Um, they get 15 yards here on that play, but um, it, it, it's great to see that Fernando Blanco is still airing it out even after those two interceptions uh, prior. So let's see if they continue to go for that big play to those receivers up the sideline. 7-12 to go here in the second quarter. Again, a 28-7 ball game. And if you're just joining us here, Talkwitz did uh, elect to defer to the second half, but they recovered the kickoff after the special teams of Citrus Hill fumbled the ball on the opening play. Here is Derek Peters on the run, again into the white line, and he gets dropped right back. 
the forward progress maybe for about a half a yard regardless. Not much in the play here, second down and long. Yeah, and you can see that Talkwitz is trying to establish that running game, but they haven't been able to succeed here uh, thus far in this game. Second down here and 10. Blanco here dropping back, looking for Tavares on the play over his head. Cannot make the grab, it's incomplete. Third down and long, and right now Talkwitz uh, you know, they've just seen a lot coming at them. This, this defensive line of Citrus Hill, obviously known to be one of the best in the Eastern Division. And we've already seen, you know, a very uh, well-coached uh, secondary here by the Hawks. And they've really just brought out everything. They're firing on all cylinders right now. Yeah, and, we've been, and, and we saw earlier that Michael Stewart wanted the challenge to face such a, such a great secondary. And um, as we see here, a pass intended for Michael Stewart, but it, it goes incomplete. It was knocked down. But, um, you know, these guys know that they're facing a tough secondary. They know coming into this game that this is a big, big defense that they're facing. And uh, and they've been able to witness that, hey, it's, it's going to be really tough to get any yards in this game. Another three and out here uh, for this Talkwitz offense. Only taking about a minute and a half off the clock. Ball here punted away. A high punt, taking a small talk with bounces. It's down at the 35 yard line. That's where the offense of Citrus Hill will start. We'll keep it right here again, 6.25 to go. Right now a 21 point ball game and Takwitz trying to, you know, hold on to something right now. But this offense, uh, you know, known for putting up a whole bunch of points. Last week they scored 53 in the first half. There's only been one touchdown scored and it's been really quiet. So far for talk, the Talkwitz offense all night long. On first down and 10 here. Citrus Hill taking the snap. Quick pass. Thrown down to KJ Young. Up along the far side, taken down. Inside the 40 as he's down at the 42. Gain of about six, second down and four. And uh, Citrus Hill's coming out on the field. Um, you know they want to blow this game open. You know they want to get that touchdown before the end of the half, blow this game out of the water by halftime. Um, even though Talkwitz does receive the ball in the second half, you know Talkwitz wanted to get that score before the half, knowing that they're gonna receive the ball. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, they, they haven't been able to, you know, muster any yardage so far. False start call, so bring that five yard gain right back to where they started from here. Second down now and 10 yards to go. 5.51 to go in the first quarter, and you think that maybe a score here by Citrus Hill could probably, you know, change the pace of this game and really keep it under their whole control. On the handoff to P.J. Walker, runs into the line and gets tripped up, but not before a begin of maybe about one. So there might be enough time on the clock here for Talkwitz to, uh, if they get a stop on this third down, to be able to do something before going into halftime to be able to cut this back down to two possession game um, as they receive the ball in the second half. There goes Hodge, rolling out, pass complete, down to Young, trying to juke away through a few tackles. Gets tackled up along the near side. He's about two yards shy of the first down where the referees are positioned. Fourth down and two. Looking at the Citrus Hill sideline, Obviously a team that's 8-0 you would expect to go for it. And it looks as if the offense will most likely, with a couple of changes, I think they're going to stay on the field. Yeah, this is going to be a big fourth down play for the Talkwitz defense. On the hurry up here, fourth down and two. Bunch formation, hands it off up the middle. It's a half yard gain maybe. The referees are saying he was a yard shy of a first down. Four down territory, turnover on downs, move it the other way. That was a great stop there by Talkwitz defense. Uh, they knew what was coming. They knew they were going to try to pound it in for that first down, and they were able to stop the running back just, just shy by about a yard. Again, unfamiliar territory here for Talkwitz. Uh, their biggest deficit since their second game of the year against Murrieta Mesa. How can they respond here on first down then 10? After getting the ball, after forcing a four down turnover. Blanca here in the shotgun, 
Play action, rolling out, taken down for a huge sack, nine yards. And on the play, sniffed out by Devo Martin. Yeah, that was a huge sack there by, uh, by Martin. But uh, the, the Citrus Hill defense, again, showing, showing how strong they are, how fast they are. They're, they're just not letting up. They're not going to let up this entire game. They know what's on the line. They know that the league title's on the line, and they sure as heck don't want Talkwitz to get it. Second down here and 19 to go after the nine-yard sack. Blanco takes a snap, stays in pocket, looking for Tavares. Pass is caught near the 50. They're going to say he's down at the 50. That'll be a gain of about four, setting up now third down and a very long 15 yards to go. Clock here still ticking, 3.45 to go in the first half of play. Once again, the league title on the line. Both teams coming in to mound pass league play at 3-0. and A winner gets at least a share of that title. Blanco here takes a snap. Great pressure, great, great blocking by the defensive line. Thrown to Tavares, incomplete, but you see Jack Brown putting a hand on Tavares. Asparis. Asparis correction, and that'll draw a PI call. Yeah, you can. that was a clear pass interference there. He had his hands all over Sean Asparis before the ball uh, even got to him. So that's a big 15 yards here for Tokwitz, uh, and it was a, a, another third down penalty that negatively affects Citrus Hill. And um, talk to just trying to just get as much as of the momentum as they can right now going into halftime, and that flag definitely helped them out. Yeah, 3.28 to go here. It's a matter of obviously with the running game not working too well. Uh, you obviously on this kind of drive want to be the, the team that has the ball last before halftime. Low snap, hand it off to Price, spin move, but can't escape. He's taken down behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of about half a yard. Setting up here second down and about close to 11. You also know Jonte Price is in unfamiliar territory, not being able to gain um, that much yardage uh, here tonight. So uh, we got to see what they're going to do. We see them trying to establish the run game unsuccessfully, but they're still going to be trying to go to Jonte Price for that big play. Second down here and 11 yards to go. Under three to go in the first half. Blanco play action rolls out. Left side, he's going to keep it, and he gets shoestring down. About a four-yard gain on the play. Third down and seven to go. Decision time here for Dennis Gregovich to see what he wants to run on this third down conversion. Yeah, you can see on that play on the rollout that the defense had all the receivers very well covered, uh, so Blanco had to try to gain some yardage there on his feet. Third down here and seven yards to go. Clock here still taking under 2.15 to go. On the quick pass, looking for Stewart on the slant, dropped and incomplete. Stewart had two defenders on top of him, heard the footsteps, so he could not bring that pass in. Yeah, I think the defense got a hand on the ball on that one too. Normally Stewart comes down with that slant play, um, comes down with the ball for good yardage, but uh, the defense is doing a great job of playing man-to-man -man against these receivers. A whistle here and a timeout called by Tokwitz to talk things over. Obviously, four down territory. We'll keep it right here, 2.09 to go. Again, a 28-7 ball game with the Mount Pass League title, at least a share of it on the line. Citrus Hill coming in with winning 20 of their last 21 wins. This year they have not given up more than 15 points and that came out early in the season. So obviously for Tokwitz, they know they were getting themselves into, but again, those 28 points, looking at that board, about half of those have come unanswered. Yeah, Tokwitz defense has done a great job this year, um, except for against that uh, Division II Murrieta Mesa team, they gave up 60 points. Um, so we see again, they're facing a high powered offense and, and a great defense and, and it's been it's been rough on them so far yeah obviously they haven't really faced an opponent opponent this tough since that myriad Mesa game but at the same time they've really set their mark in this league fourth down and seven on the shotgun blanco takes the snap pocket quickly collapsing firing it up to the sparris great defensive work there by jack Brown. a tip off the pass 
It'll be another turnover on downs here for the Titans as the ball will go the other way. Yeah, there was a little bit of pressure there on Blanco, and he, he got rid of the ball just a little bit early. Um, Esparis was able to get a hand on it, but unfortunately for them, it, it, it fell incomplete. Now, you want to be careful if you're Takwitz right now. Uh, about 125 seconds to go in the first half, and uh, you do not want to let any kind of score up on the board, except maybe a field goal, but regardless, it's still a three-possession game, and if you're Takwitz, you want to keep it that way. The defense needs to stand tall here on the option. The pitch out to P.J. Walker. 11-yard gain, moving the chains for a first down. Yeah, that was a great read there by Trevor Hodge, the quarterback for Citrus Hill. He saw a couple defenders coming at him in the option, had his uh, running back open right behind him, gave it to him, and uh, they were able to get a, a big gain there for a first down. Still have two timeouts in their pocket. First down, here is Hodge. Keep it himself, he'll throw it, almost had a chance for a pickoff. On the play there, Christian Bertrand had a chance for maybe a game-changing pick, but reacted a little too late. Yeah, Bertrand was uh, pretty much in the right place at the right time, but uh, his, his reaction time was just a little slow, wasn't able to get to the ball in time, and uh, so luckily for Citrus Hill, that fell incomplete. Hard snap count there by Hodge. Forcing a couple players on the line to jump over. So counted a five yard penalty here, setting up second down and about five yards to go. Nearing Takwood's territory. Clock reading here, 152 to go in the first half of play. Play action, thrown down to Young. Up along the far side, trying to evade a couple of tackles but instead gets brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And that's the Talkwitz defense we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing Talkwitz um, getting big stops, getting tackles for losses, being able to read the offense very effectively, not letting him advance much. Um, but so far this game, we haven't seen that as often as, they, as we'd like. They've, you know, they've given up 28 points already. Um, they need to be able to focus that, their energy into plays like that. Third down here in six. Hodge dropping back, gets taken down, but releases it before the sack. And that's huge, because that does stop the clock. A minute seven to go after the incompletion. The referee uh, looking to see if they're going to add time. No, they're going to keep it at a minute seven to go. But that was a huge play by the defense. Yeah, that was a, a great play there. Big, big. Big, uh, big hit on that pass, um, hit as he threw. And so it, we're seeing a little bit of the pressure that they were putting on in the very first drive of this game. Uh, Talkwitz defense is putting a little bit of more pressure again uh, on the Citrus Hill quarterback. Citrus Hill setting up to punt. It is booted away, a high one, fair catch signaled by Mytorius Boyd. So it'll be fair con at the 25 yard line. 75 yards away from the end zone, and it'll be interesting to see what Takwitz will do. You're very far away from the end zone. You have one timeout left and exactly one minute to go. You want to put points on the board, but it's just obviously a matter of when. Looking at the offense as they're coming back out on the field, they're spread out. Yeah, you just don't want to risk that interception, that pick six like they, like they gave up earlier. Um, you just got to be careful with that. If you're going to air it out, make sure that you pass it to someone that is open or away from any defender. So first down and 10 at the 24-yard line. Ball handed off here to Price and again goes down behind the line. Price just showing off his frustration. He's just not getting anything good working his way right now. Yeah, normally we praise Price on his great vision, but there's no holes for him to actually burst through the defense has just been smothering all over Jonte Price clock here ticking as uh, after the two yard loss here second down and 12 yards to go again on the spread offense Blanco back in the shotgun takes a snap again the handoff to Price runs over a tackler and then gets taken down back at the first down marker a gain of about two maybe three clock here ticking 
under 20 to go, and I think they might be content to just take it here at a three score deficit. Slow back on the ball, 10 seconds to go. I don't think they're gonna snap the ball here. Yeah, I think they're gonna take it here into the locker room, down by three touchdowns. Clock here at zero. Right now, Taquitz has met their match. First time since Miriam and Mesa, they go into the locker room down at the half, and in fact, they are down by 21 points, 28-7 to score. We'll take a halftime timeout right here and get you guys our halftime show in just a little bit. This is Friday Night Football right here on PlayOnSports.com. Don't go anywhere. Second half in just a few.
Welcome back, folks, here alongside Joel Diaz. Manny News here making the call. Timmy Tim Barker, our producer, and upstairs, man of the camera, is Jonathan Silva. Joel Diaz, what a phenomenal halftime show. Game room style all over the stands, in our crowd, up on the field, on the other side. It was just, it, it, was, a, it was a great show. Yeah, the dance team for uh, Talk With here, doing a little bit of Elvis Crespo Suavemente, followed by Gangnam Style. Had me doing Gangnam Style up here <laughs> in the booth. I was so excited. I'm telling you, it was rocking all around this park, uh, trying to forget uh, that score up on the board here. Again, Takwitz down by a score of 28-7. to seven. Focusing back on the game right now, Joel, a much-needed halftime break here for this Titan team. Uh, you know, a couple of mistakes here and there, and it's really kind of cost them in these first 24 minutes. Yeah, you know, Gregovich definitely had a, a big talk with this team at halftime in the locker room. You know, definitely emphasizing, hey, we need to move the ball. They're not giving us the run. We need to do something. We saw them go to a few big plays, but a couple of them went for interceptions. Um, a couple of them, they, you know, they got lucky and, and they were able to draw that pass interference call to move the chains. But um, that may not be enough to get them back into the game. So you know that Gregovich is saying, hey, Fernando Blanco, keep airing it out. Keep getting it to our receivers. We know the running game's not working right now. We have to do something to get points on the board. And that's the thing, too. And I think the one big thing that they can take, uh, uh, that they did take, actually, in the locker room is that they did, they will be receiving the ball to start the second half as they kicked off uh, to start the game, but they recovered on the fumble. Um, but this time around, like you said, Joel, uh, you know, they got a score on this drive right now. And it's funny because, you know, you talk about a, a team who's missing their starting quarterback and Benjamin Moreno, he's out with a broken scapula, one of those very rare injuries. Uh, uh, only happens to about one or two people, uh, one or two percent of all people per year. But uh, um, it, it's, it hasn't been that, that big of a difference here today. Even with Moreno here uh, as their quarterback, if they would have had him here, it might be still the same outcome. It's been really the running game that has not really had a chance to, to spark up this whole entire night. Here on the kickoff return, here is Tim Neely who takes it to the 24 and then gets laid down near the 25 and that's where the drive will start here. First down and 10. Again, the running game for Tokwitz has not found its niche all night. Yeah, um, it, it's been very difficult for them to get any yards. You, you can sense the frustration by John Tay Price. Um, I think that the difference that Benjamin Moreno would have made is that he's a great, great uh, field general out there. He's a great leader for his team, and that, that takes away a lot um, from the offense because of those leadership skills. Fernando Blanco is doing a great job uh, filling in as quarterback, but he doesn't have those team leadership skills the, uh, as Benjamin Moreno does. Here's Tavares Tolton taking the reverse up along the far side. One play, and that's a first down, a gain of about 13. And we got to see a little bit of the running game here coming into the second half. They were able to get a first down on that first run, which is exactly what they want to do. They've only been getting two, maybe three yards if lucky, uh, and they were actually able to get about 10, 11 yards on that run. First down and 10 after the big game there by Tavares Tolton. The handoff here to... Uh, I believe it's Derek Peters. Forward progress moves them for about three yards. It'll set up right now a second down at about seven yards to go. Yeah, we've been able to see that halfback dive play that they run so often trying to find the holes in the defense to get big gains hasn't really worked. You see that they only get about three yards per run. Uh, so the sweep previously worked very well for them and was able to get them the first down. Second down here and long. Uh, Blanco dropping back, fires up the middle, looking for Boyd over his hands and incomplete. A nice pass there, but Boyd was not positioned in front of the ball here, setting up now third down and seven to go. Yeah, Fernando Blanco uh, threw it behind Boyd. Boyd was cutting across the middle of the field, had to tried to reach back for the ball to bring it in, but it was too far away. Uh, his momentum was taking him the other way. Third down here and about seven to six. Firing it up towards the middle, looking for Tavares Tolton. Just out of his reach, incomplete. Fourth down and out comes the punting unit. Not the drive that you wanted if you are the Titans. Uh, forcing a uh, failed third down conversion. That'll give the ball right back to Citrus Hill. 
Yeah, as I mentioned to start the half, uh, you know they're going to be airing it out a lot more here. They need to get those yard, that, those big yard plays. They need to get the ball into the end zone. Uh, Blanco, a couple uh, errand passes here in this drive, now forcing the fourth down punt. A high snap, but is kicked off. A short uh, Citrus Hill bounce will be down at the 49. That's again where the drive will start here for Citrus Hill. We'll keep it right here. 10.50 to go in the third quarter. Again, Takwitz facing their what looks to be their biggest deficit in about seven weeks. Last time they were down this big, it was against Murrieta Mesa, one of the top teams out of the Inland Division. This time around, it's against their Mountain Pass League foe and the Citrus Hill Hawks. On the handoff here, KJ Young, who gets brought down in the backfield. A flag is on the play, and I think it will be called against Citrus Hill. Talk with most likely will decline. Yeah, that was, a, that was a good job there by the Talkwitz defense. Uh, they were able to read that run play and bring them down for a big, big loss. Um, I believe they'll decline it, yeah, as they, as they do decline the holding penalty, um, forcing the second down and about 15 yards here for Citrus Hill. But uh, we've seen so far this game, Citrus Hill's offense is, has been moving very efficiently down the field uh, and putting up, putting up points. Second down and 15 here, clock at 10.50. On the option, there is Trevor Hodge who faked out the pitch. Another flag, no, not on the play there. Talk what's looking for maybe an unsportsmanlike, but instead it goes for a seven yard gain there by Trevor Hodge on the quarterback keeper. Setting him now third down and seven. Clock here ticking, 10.25 to go here in the third quarter of play. Three receivers on the right-hand side after the no huddle. Hodge here in the short shotgun. Fires up to the receiver, passes caught. Shoestring tackled up at the 42, and that is number 18, Jonathan Boyd. Fourth down and two, and... Uh, by the looks of it, uh, Citrus Hill keeping the offense on the field. They will go for it back out of the no huddle. Yeah, that was a, a great tackle there by the defender. Uh, he was able to save uh, the, f the first down, able to stop them from getting to the first down marker by a yard. But uh, as you can see, Citrus Hill is on the field on this fourth down, trying to uh, prevent Tocklets from getting the ball. And do they? No, they don't get the first. On the quarterback keeper, Trevor Hodge, back to the line of scrimmage. A huge turnover on downs here, forced by the Titans. They'll get the ball right back. Yeah, that was a, that was a tiny little win there for the Talkwitz defense. You know that this offense is going to come onto the field saying, hey, our defense is doing a pretty good job tonight. We need to put some more points on the board. We need to help our defense. Um, I think Fernando Blanco is going to keep airing it out. He's not doing too too bad of a job uh, seeing open receivers. Let's see if he can actually uh, hit them between their numbers. First down and 10 on the handoff. Here is Derek Peters on the triple option up the near side, gaining of about three. And you're right, Joel. I, I mean, the, the defensive Tonkowitz, they've done a really good job at least trying to keep him in the game so far. A mistake here and there, only the, on the kickoff return and obviously on the run there by... Uh, KG Young, but nonetheless, they've actually done pretty well. Yeah, the defense has only given up 14 points. Uh, if you think back, one of the touchdowns was on special teams, and the other one was a pick six. Oh, speaking of here, here is KJ Young on the interception. Up at the 10, is he knocked down over the end zone? No! He's knocked down out of bounds at the two, but that will kill the drive for Tokwitz. Yeah, another... Uh, Momentum killer there for Talkwitz. We, we, we've seen a few of those here tonight, uh, unfortunately. And that puts Citrus Hill at the one yard line, getting ready to put another touchdown on the board. It, this, this would increase their lead to four touchdowns. Uh, it, it seems uh, slightly insurmountable for Talkwitz the way that they, they've been playing here tonight. Yeah, right now, you can just see Talkwitz right now. Uh, this play, this 
This touchdown may have them go down on the count. The run there by P.J. Walker into the end zone for six points. Finding pay dirt. Touchdown, Citrus Hill. Yeah, and again, as we're just talking about right now, now they're up by four scores, four touchdowns, and this is making it that much more difficult for Tokwitz. Um, you know, their, their confidence is low right now. The defense has been doing a great job. As I was mentioning, they've only given up 14 points. Um, the, well, now 20, 21 points after the, this uh, short run at the one-yard line, but it's due to the pick six, the, the kickoff return, uh, as well as this interception here, these turnover, turnovers have been very, very costly for, for Talkwitz. Yeah, like you said, Joel, 21 unanswered points. And uh, really, if you look at the scoreboard right now, it could easily be a 14-7 ball game with Talkwitz uh, maybe have a having a chance to, uh, of gaining, uh, gaining some ground. But uh, mistakes here by Blanco. He's thrown two picks, or correction, three picks, uh, two of which were returned uh, near the end zone, or near for a touchdown. One of them did cross the uh, the goal line, but right now uh, it's just been those few mistakes that have really given Citrus Hill the complete advantage here tonight. Yeah, and it's been really difficult because they've had to rely on Blanco a lot tonight due to the run game not being as effective. Citrus Hill has been, came into this game prepared to stop John Tate Price, to stop Derek Peters, and forcing Tokwitz to go to the air. And uh, as, as you can see, Blanco has thrown three interceptions tonight. And they, they need to be able to figure out some play calls to use some of their other weapons to get the ball down the field and into the end zone. Kickoff goes high and deep into the end zone. It'll be down there for a touchback. So the ball will be brought here at the 20 yard line. 8.48 to go here. In the third quarter, and right now, Tokwitz again down by a score of 35 to seven. Right now, uh, yeah, th this has their, been their biggest test so far, and I think you know, aside scoring aside, they've done okay. But right now, this running game has not found its rhythm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's been a phenomenal job by the Citrus Hill defense, forcing these turnovers, stopping the run as effectively as they have and uh, forcing Tokwitz to figure out other ways to get some yardage. Tavares Tallin here on the reverse, takes it to the near side. He's knocked out of bounds at the 32. It is a first down. It's what's been really working, uh, uh, you know, giving the ball to some other, some other hands aside from uh, their tailbacks. Tavares here again in motion. He'll take the ball this time up the middle. Escaping a tackle and gets taken down at the 47. Yeah, as, as you just mentioned, what, we, what we're seeing here is that they've been handing the ball off to uh, Tavares Talton. Um, he's coming around from the receiver position into a sweep motion, and they've been handing it off to him, and that's been able to throw the Citrus Hill defense off guard just a little bit and getting them those big gains that they're looking for. First down and 10 here at the 47-yard line. Again on the motion, this time they hand it off to Peters. On the triple option, Peters fools them big. A big gain there, biggest of the night up the middle. Another first down on the 14 yard run. Yeah, and you know Gregovich is saying, hey, we gotta switch things up. They're stopping our typical run plays. Let's change things up. They handed it to Tavares two plays in a row. They fake that third one and go right up the middle because the defense was ready for Tavares again on that one. So that opened up a hole through the middle for Peters to be able to get a big gain. Take a timeout right here. 8-16 to go here in the third quarter. A 35-7 Hawk lead. This is Friday Night Football right here on PlayOnSports.com. Tonight's third quarter is being brought to you by Quality Plus Construction. With over 15 years of serving the commercial and retail industry in Southern California, Quality Plus Services will handle all of your maintenance and construction needs. Located at 1655 East 6th Street in Corona, California, call Quality Plus Services for your next project. Find out more information at www.qpfixme.com or call them at 888-QP-FIXME. That's 888-773-4963. Coming out of the timeout right here, 8.16 to go here in the third quarter of play. First down and 10 inside of Citrus Hill territory. Balls here is marked at the 39-yard line. 
Stewart here in motion. A whistle and a flag on the play. And I believe it'll be a false start called against the Titans. Bring it back five. And the last thing you want uh, as a talk with offense is to get penalties against you. Um, you. You're already struggling to get some yardage, struggling to move the ball forward. Last thing you want is to move the ball backward with, uh, with false start penalties. So after the five yard penalty here, setting up first down and 15, Bull with the ball. Marked down at the 44 yard line of Citrus Hill. Ball go back in the shotgun to receivers left and right. Single back behind him, it's Derek Peters. Peters takes the handoff, moves up to the far hash mark, and then gets taken down for about a four yard gain. Second down now in 11. Clock here ticking under eight to go in the third. And uh, again, they're going to the run game here. Uh, they've seen Blanco throw three picks, and so it looks like they're going back exclusively to the run um, until you know they can see that Blanco can calm down a little bit and not let those interceptions get to him. Second down here and 11 here. Triple option here, handed off to Price. A flag on the play. Price taken down at the 36. Thrown in the area of holding. Price is uh, biggest run of the night, holding call against Tockwood. So wave off that six yard gain. It'll now set up here second down and long. And that's just gotta add to John Tay Price's frustration. He finally gets his biggest run of the night, which was only about five yards. And, and it, it's uh, wiped away with the holding penalty. So at 7.36 to go and a chance to, you know, maybe gain a little bit of ground instead. Uh, They've got a lot more work to do on this drive. Second down and about 21 to go. Clock here taken under 7.30 to go here in the third quarter. Blanco drops back, stays in pocket, firing it up to Tavares again. Overshooting the receiver. It's been the story, the theme of the story, or of this game, sorry, all night long. He's been fighting his, uh, his men down the field, but he's overshooting his receivers every time. Yeah. Tavares Talton on that play was wide open on the seam um, along the numbers and Blanco just had, has to put him just slightly over his head. It he would have been able to come down, cradle that ball and gone to the end zone. But he overthrew his receiver. I'd say it's better than underthrowing his receiver because he, he's done that and it's been three picks. On the quick blitz, quick pass there thrown to Michael Stewart. Clotheslining a guy and then gets tackled at the 42. A nine yard gain on the play. Fourth down and 12. Not deep or far enough away to go for it, so they'll bring out the punting unit. Yeah, Michael Stewart had a filthy, filthy stiff arm on that one. Was able to get some extra yards, but um, unfortunately for them, it wasn't enough. They're 12 yards away from the first down marker, and, and you know they don't want to give great field position to Citrus Seal here, so they'll go for the punt. Bounced away, it'll take a small Citrus Hill bounce and it's down, I believe, at the five, but the referees are saying it's gonna be down at the seven. A 35-7 ball game, 6.58 to go here in the third quarter of play. Once again, we'll keep it right here. Right now, you know, this 8 no Citrus Hill team, they've uh, really not disappointed of what they brought in tonight. Uh, Winners of 20 of tw their last 21 games, extending their winning streak, uh, uh, obviously to a very long affair. And right now, we're, we're seeing who the better team is right now. Yeah, the, you could say this is the big dog of this league. Citrus Hill winning 20 out of 21 of their last games. They're establishing that dominance in this league, and you can see that tonight. They're establishing the dominance on defense against Tokwitz. Uh, as we see, there's a timeout called here by Tokwitz as they're gonna talk things over for, for defense. And I was gonna say here, uh, you know, again, Citrus Hill, uh, you know, all season long, uh, they've not had big wins. I mean, if you look at the schedule, their biggest win came uh, last week when they took on Hemet, but, uh, you know, at the same time, it's, been, it's really been their defense. The most points they've really led it all year long uh, has been 15, and that came off early in the year. If you look at the schedule, they've had wins of 40 to 15, 49 to 10, 56, 31, 52, 14. 52, 14 has been their biggest blowout uh, so far this season. And their, and their first uh, 
game. They actually gave up the, mo the most points that year. So they're not really known for putting up a lot of points. Yes, they're averaging about 40 a game, but at the same time, it's really been uh, the other side of the ball where they've really done a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very cliche to say, but defense does win championships. And uh, it seems that Citrus Hill is absolutely establishing that defense throughout the season. And you can see that here tonight. And it, it'll get them, it'll definitely get them that league championship. On the run here, taken by P.J. Walker, gain of about six. Setting up here second down and four o'clock here, ticking 6.35 to go in this third quarter. Again, a 28-point lead here for the Hawks. Both teams have used one timeout thus far in this third quarter. Hodge here in the shotgun again, single back. He'll take it himself on the quarterback keeper, running right into the line, trying to move the pile over the first down marker, and I believe the forward progress will allow them to move the chains. Yeah, we've been able to see tonight also, um, the quarterback Trevor Hodge has been able to use his feet a lot to get some, some first downs, and that's something you don't always expect when you're on defense. You're always looking for him to air it out or, or hand it off but uh, he can use his feet, so that's another another weapon that Citrus Hill has for their offense. Quick pass down to KJ Young along the far side. A, a bunch of flags on the play, an obvious holding call up against the offensive line. Yeah, uh, Andrew Bradley there on the offensive line, or one of the receivers actually for Citrus Hill tackled one of the defensive guys, so that was a clear, clear holding call. Um, favorable for Toklitz. So move that play back 10 yards. Back to a first and 20. Clock here at under six minutes to go in the third quarter. Slow getting back onto the line here. Citrus Hill now ready to go. Three receivers to the left hand side. The handoff to Young, uh, can't get anywhere. He got tripped up on his own two feet, taken down behind the line. Yeah, that was a big stop there. Um, he, he didn't have any room to move around, and Tocklitz was able to get, get to him quick enough, and now it's a second and very, very long 20 yards. Back again out of the no huddle with the offense here spread out. Two receivers left and right. Single back behind a Hodge where P.J. Walker stands. Hodge dropping back, escapes the pressure out of the pocket. He'll run it himself. Shy of the first down marker, a gain of 18 yards. The feet of Trevor Hodge has done major damage here to this Talkwitz defense. Yeah, and as I, I was mentioning just a couple plays ago, Hodge's feet is that other weapon that the Citrus Hill offense can use um, to move the ball down the field. If no one's open, if, if their running game with their tailback isn't working, just have Hodge, you know, run it down himself. And as you can see with that 18-yard gain, it's been working a lot. Hodge oh, trying to take it himself again on the quarterback keeper, but I think it might be enough. They're going to say he's down at the 30-yard line. The first down was at the 29. An official, though, the officials will take a timeout to men. No, they won't. They won't measure. They're going to say it's about a football uh, length. Enough for a first down, so that will move the chains as he's down at the 30 on the run. Clock here ticking there after the first down. 425 and counting to go here in the third quarter. Hodge here dropping back, trying to roll out. Pocket quickly collapsing and then escapes near the far side. And then gets brought down, but not, after a, not before a five-yard gain as he's taken down at the 36. Yeah, again, another run there by Hodge. Um, you can see that Tocklitz is pulling back a little bit of that pressure because of that weapon of Hodge's speed and him being able to run the ball himself. Um, they only had three men rushing that ball and they were playing a little zone, but that still gave enough room for Hodge to get a five-yard gain on that play. Second down now and four yards to go. Hodge again on the shotgun throw. Pass complete. Up down to Jonathan Boyd as he's pushed out of bounds. That's a first down. And again, uh, Citrus Hill here slowly moving the chains. They've, they've been able to hold on to this ball for a while. Um, time of possession is absolutely on their side. And they've just completely dominated this game on both sides. Uh, Citrus Hill offenses 
moving very fluidly. They've been very effective. They know how to work together, and you can see that. And that's why they're, you know, they've won 20 out of the last 21. Back in the shotgun, single back. Snap goes over the head of Hodge. P.J. Walker takes it, and that's a huge, huge loss. 15 yards, if not more. But that will change things here, and a great, great pushback there by the Takowitz defense. Yeah, those are definitely the plays that you want uh, on defense for Takowitz um, that'll help you turn things around, or at least try to turn things around. You want you know to continue to put that pressure. Obviously, that was a, a botched snap there, but you want to be able to bring that pressure to the quarterback um, so that they can at least attempt to get this game on their side. Tama here called by Citrus Hill. We'll take a timeout as well. 3.13 to go in the third quarter. Once again, Citrus Hill on top, 35-7. This is Friday Night Football right here on PlayOnSports.com. PlayOnSports.com is not only your destination for Friday Night Football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. PlayOnSports.com, high school sports lives here. Yeah, a lot of action here going on, about 100-plus Every Friday night right here on PlayOnSports.com. The playoffs here in the southern section will be starting up in two weeks and up all around central and northern California. We're covering every single sport up to the championship. And all the action here can be seen right here on PlayOnSports.com. Back out of the timeout here, 3.13 to go. Citrus Hill out with one timeout remaining. Tonkwitz here still with two. 35-7 ball game, and after the bot snap, second down and long. Looking for the sack there. The pocket quickly collapsing, but Hodge throws it away just in time, incomplete. Yeah, that was a great job there by uh, the talk with Stephen. They almost came up with the sack, um, just gave him enough time to get rid of the ball, but um, a great, great defensive stand there. Let's see if they can continue to do this on third down. Uh, because you know that Citrus Hill wants to get another touchdown on the board before the fourth quarter starts to keep that clock running for the mercy roll. And to keep it at one touchdown, too. There is the quarterback in Hodge running over to the 42 and uh, to the 45 correction out of the bounds. Again, uh, Hodge there, with big gain with his legs. Um, it's fourth down but it's now a manageable, manageable 10 yards. They're bringing on the uh, special teams unit here for the punt. But um, as you can see, the defense has not been able to really stop Hodge uh, on this drive. Yeah, an 18-yard gain luckily was well short of a first down. Takwitz, though, will definitely take it. Ball kicked away. It'll take a uh, hovering bounce. And then it'll be down at the 23 yard, at the 27 yard line correction. Again, that's where the drive will start here for Tonkwitz. And that's a big stop if you really think about it. 2.49 to go. And the one thing that they will avoid here, if pending anything, is uh, another touchdown here scored by Citrus Hill. So big stop here to really keep points off the board. Yeah, definitely. Because you want to be able to still stop the clock in the first fourth quarter if you're trying for that comeback. Um, you want to be able to score here before the end of the third quarter to, you know, cut the lead to, uh, you know, three, poss three possessions. But um, Takwas definitely wants to prevent any mercy rule action from uh, Citrus Hill. Tavares Tallon here on the reverse takes it to the 35. A big gain of about seven yards here, second down at three. And it's funny because this has been their biggest deficit that they faced nearing the end of this third quarter against Miriam Mesa uh, about two months ago. They were able to come back and actually cut the lead. Here is Jonte Price, his biggest run of the night. About 13 yards taking it in to Citrus Hill territory. Yeah, actually about a 20 yard run there by Jonte Price. He had a great job there. He was able to use that vision that we know he has and he's probably excited to finally get a run of more than just four or five yards. Derek Peters in the backfield. Here's Tom DeVars on the reverse. He'll take it himself up along the far side. A, a couple of beautiful jukes and then takes it down at the 39 yard line. Here's this offense. It's a rumbling and a tumbling. 
Yeah, definitely is about a yard short of the first down, but you can see they're going to the no huddle here and going to Talton Tavares, or Tavares Talton, excuse me, and they're doing a great job of moving the ball down the field. Derek Peters on the handoff. It is a first down, though. There's a flag on the play. He gets taken down, but the Florida Progress will have him down at the 35, and I think it will be an illegal shift called against the Titans. So bring this drive most likely back about five. Waiting for, again, the referee's signal. Yes, an illegal procedure called against the Titans. So it'll be now second down and six instead. So wave off the first down. Yeah, again, that's the last thing you want. You don't want to have any penalties against your offense right now, especially when you're trying and trying to get back into this game. Uh, and those, those flags are making it that much more difficult to accomplish that. Second down now and six, a minute 40 and counting to go in this third quarter. Again, Takwood's down by four touchdowns. Blanco takes a snap, firing it up the middle. Incomplete, a flag though on the play. Would have been a six yard gain and maybe a first down and I think Citrus Hill kind of shot themselves in the foot. So instead of a six yard gain on a potential catch, it's a P.I. call that'll move him up 15. Well, again, uh, another flag on that play, but this one actually helps Talkwitz, um moving him that much closer to the end zone. They're uh, now at the 29-yard line in, uh, on the uh, Citrus Hill side. Let's see if they can actually put this ball into the end zone before the end of the quarter. 129 to go here. Blanco firing it up to Stewart, and it's incomplete, but a flag on the play. All over him, James Ooten throwing his body in front of him at 15 more. Yeah, that was a clear, clear pass interference on that play. He wasn't playing the ball whatsoever. Um, he was all over Michael Stewart, and that's a great, great break there. Um, you know Michael Stewart would have come down with that. But uh, 15 yards there for Talkwitz, and now they're only about 15 yards away from the end zone and cutting this to a three, three touchdown game. First time in the red zone in quite a while. 124 to go here. Tavares on the motion. He'll take the ball on the reverse. Inside the 10, down to the 5, lost the football. Recovered in the end zone. It's a touchdown for Talkwitz. Woo! Wipe wow. that sweat off your forehead, Talkwitz fans. Recovered to the end zone, and they've got six more on the board. That was lucky. I mean, Tavares was fighting for those extra yardage, fighting to get in the end zone. He loses the ball a couple yards away, and he's freaking out. You can see he'll, and uh, luckily, one of the uh, Talkwitz uh, offensive players was right there to fall on top of the ball as uh, about three white jerseys were all over them. But lucky for them, they, they were able to get that touchdown. Whew. And I'm telling you, sounds cliche, dodging a bullet. But I think that might be the right term there. Matrix style dodging a bullet. <laughs> Setting up here the extra point to make it a 21 point deficit. The snap, the hold, the kick, it is up and it is a good. Talkwitz fans, they're not done yet. 35-14 after the run there by Tolton Tavares for 15 yards. Take a timeout right here. This is Friday Night Football right here on PlayOutSports.com. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to PlayOnSports.com slash SBP. A minute 16 to go here in the third quarter. And I must say that this that might have been their best drive that they've had all night. And it was done obviously because they took control of the penalties. Two the two PI calls against uh against Central so, but more more than ever, the running game finally got into effect. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a different style of running game. We've seen a lot of sweep plays, we've seen a lot of handoffs to the receiver, Tavares Talton, and that's been very successful. They've been able to get at least 8 to 15 yards per run through Tavares Talton. Um, normally, you, you see Jonte Price running all over, all over the field. We haven't been able to see that tonight because of the, effective, the effectiveness of the Citrus Hill defense, but uh, Toxic was finally able to find a way to move the ball on the run. 
A whistle and a flag on the play. Maybe, obviously there's two, the kickoff went out of bounds. And there was an offside penalty. But I think they're gonna re-kick it regardless. So obviously, on the offside call, it's automatic, they stop the play. Talk with, they, they got a break. They really did, because uh, on the on the out of bounds kickoff, it would have given uh, Citrus still the ball at the 40. But I think they'll take the offsides anyway and re-kick. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you know that the special teams is gonna try to go for that play that they did to start this game where they were able to recover that fumble. So let's see if they actually go to that, that little pooch kick again um, to try to get the ball back. Setting up here, bunched up, up the middle. Takwitz here setting up for the kickoff. A line drive kick, loose, but Citrus Hill falls on top of it. Ooh, a big break, and that went off the arm of the defender. Maybe had a chance to ricochet, but his body fell right on the ball. Yeah, that was, that was a good job of being able to hold on to the ball that hit him in the arms as he was diving for it. And it could have gotten away from him and Talkwitz would have been all over that. But luckily for him, he was able to hold on to that and fall on top of the ball. Citrus Hill here will take the ball at the 47-yard line of Talkwitz. A minute 16 to go here in the third quarter. Firing it up to the near side, pass complete. Down to Uten, taken down inside the 40, down at the 39. About an eight yard gain here, second down and two. And yeah, so we saw the Talkwitz offense do their job on the last drive, uh, putting points on the board. Let's see if the defense can force a big three and out here against this high powered Citrus Hill offense because they really need to get the ball as many times as they can. 45 and counting to go here in the third. High snap, but here is the feed of Hodge. Up along the near side, now towards the middle. Loose football! Who's got it? I believe Citrus Hill fell on top of that one, yes. Yeah, they got the ball. Another lucky break here for the Hawks. And they avoid another one there. It's, it's a huge, huge bummer for uh, the Talkwitz defense. They're forcing that fumble. Unfortunately, not being able to recover it. Those are the big plays that they're looking for here to try to get that momentum on their, their side. Uh, unfortunately, the the Citrus Hill offense was able to fall on top of that ball yet again. 36 seconds to go. Clock here running. They got to run one more play before the end of the third. The handoff here to P.J. Walker. He's taken down for about a four-yard gain. Clock here taking 25 seconds to go. Offense now slow getting on the ball. I believe that play, that last play, might be the last one here of the third quarter. The play clock now running. And I think they will take this here to the fourth quarter. 35-14, Tonkwitz answering back after giving up a touchdown to start the, uh, to start the third. They get one on their own near the end of the third by Tavares Tavar Tavar Tolton. 35 to 14 here. Talkwitz though down by 21. We'll take a quick timeout right here. This is Friday Night Football right here on PlayoutSports.com where high school sports lives right here. The fourth quarter is brought to you by Minuteman Plumbing. Make Minuteman your first choice for your plumbing needs. Need a commercial contracting plumber? Then call Minuteman today at 1-800-932-5327. Again, that's 1-800-932-5327. Minuteman Plumbing, the proud sponsor of tonight's fourth quarter action. 12 minutes to go to the side. This one here, 35 to 14. With Citrus Hill on top, once again, 8-0, taking on 7-1. But really, it's two undefeated teams in the Mountain Pass League play battling for at least a share of a league title. Tokwitz clinching a playoff berth for the first time in their school history. But right now with a three touchdown deficit, there's the run there by Hodge on the uh, option. Takes her about two yards. Right now, uh, it seems as if, as we've seen so far, they kind of might have met their match. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the defense 
again, has not been doing too bad of a job, but it, it's been the uh, the turnovers on offense that have uh, put them in, in the position they're in now. Three interceptions, uh, one of them returned for a touchdown, one of them nearly returned for a touchdown, um, and then on special teams it's been difficult as well. As they get a big stop here on third down, um, let's see if Citrus will actually goes for it or they might bring out their kicker. Looks as if uh, they are going to bring out the kicking unit here. 35 seconds off the clock here to start off the fourth quarter. Another big stop here by uh, by Tokwitz. Even with the field goal, it'll still keep it at a three-possession game. Yeah, we uh, and as we saw earlier tonight, uh, Diego Sendejas, the kicker for for the Hawks, has a uh, has a boot. It'll be a 27-yard field goal. The kick is up. It's high enough, and it is a good. So add three more on the board. 38 to 14, Citrus Hill here on top. We'll keep it right here. Right now, Joel, uh, I'll take the three points if you're talking right now because you still are down by three touchdowns and obviously three two-point conversions. But obviously, time not on your side. You've got to score quick. Yeah, absolutely. I know, I know that uh, Gregovich is going to be running that no huddle offense. Um, very fast and very often here in this fourth quarter. They're going to try to get um, scores on the board as fast as they possibly can. Uh, you may even see a couple of those pooch kicks again or the squibs onside to try to do something on special teams. And uh, they might rely heavily on the, on the defense to be able to stop Citrus Hill that the, the way that they have been able to so far in the second half. Yeah, and the thing too with Citrus Hill, obviously the more experienced team in this league, uh, you know, winners of a league title last year and uh, obviously this year, uh, you know, now not many blowout wins, but they know how to close out teams in the fourth quarter and they can do it with phenomenal clock management. Sendejas will kick it off. It'll bounce out of bounds at the five. And that is an illegal procedure, so it'll be down at the 40. A break here for Tokwitz. Let's see if they'll take advantage. Yeah, that's absolutely a break that Tokwitz needs. Uh, it'll give them great field position. Uh, Sendejas, I know, was trying to get that into the end zone for the touchback, but it just went out at the five. So uh, let's see what Tokwitz can do here with the great field position to start as they're actually uh, placing the ball on the 30 uh, to start this drive but you know that they're going to be trying to air it out, trying to get some big plays, maybe a few trick plays here and there uh, to try to move down the ball, move the ball down the field uh, quickly. They're actually going to move the ball down at the 35, as a matter of fact. Regardless, it's pretty decent field position here for the Titans. First down and 10, 11, 20 to go here in the fourth and final quarter. The handoff here to Jonte Price, trying to escape... A shoestring tackle, but then Ted gets taken down for a gain of about three. And I think on that play, that was definitely a touchdown saving tackle. Jonte Price saw a big hole. He was running right for it, and uh, they barely just got a hold of his shoes and were able to bring him down. But uh, you know Jonte Price is going for that big home run play. Under 11 to go now here in the fourth quarter. Second down here and long. Jonte Price again on the run. Back to the line of scrimmage. Lost ball. Citrus Hill recovers. Another turnover here by Tokwitz, the fourth of the night. And that, that's, that's just a heartbreaker there for Tokwitz. I mean, they're, they're doing a pretty good job to get back into this game. They're finally able to figure out a way to move the ball down the field, and, uh, and they coughed the ball up on this drive, and, and that's just a... Big, big heartbreak for them. Yeah, they, uh, with Citrus Hill, if they score here after the turnover, that will make it 28 unanswered points. On the run, here is Hodge at the 20. Gets taken down inside the 15, down to about the 13. First down on the run. No, we, we've seen these last few drives from Citrus Hill. They've been going pretty heavy with the quarterback runs. Um, we've been able to see that Hodge can break for, for big runs. He's got that speed. He's got the, that vision as well to be able to find those holes and, and get some extra yardage. Back out of the run here, first down and 10. Quick pass down to K.J. Young up along the far side. 
Racing down to the five and then taken down at the three. Another first down and right now they're just using what they got right now out of their playbook and two draw, two plays so far has gotten them, has gotten them near the goal line. Yeah, two plays, two first downs. Um, they definitely don't want Talkwitz to think that they can get back in this game. They're trying to take the wind out of their sails and you can see that by these couple plays, you know they're gonna try to go for the end zone here. Um, two yards away, first and goal. It's gonna be tough for Talkwitz. Bunch formation here, down to the three, fumbled football! Talkwitz saying they've got it, and they do! A lucky break, Talkwitz will take it, and now they've got some life. Yeah, so, uh, Hit your shell on that one. It's like, well, here, you can have the ball back. <laughs> Staying to talk with some talk with now with the big break. They're deep into their own territory this time. Uh, but as we've been able to see this last couple drives, they were able to move down the field effectively. Let's see if they can continue to do that, um, even though they're, they're at their own six yard line. This could definitely change things here if they can put points on the board here on this drive, but they've got to do it quick. 9.40 to go before this game is over. Ball at their own five. Blanco here in the shotgun. He's got to take it himself. He's in the end zone. Is it a safety? Yes, it is. Fernando Blanco could not escape the collapsing pocket on the triple option. He took it himself, but could not get over the goal line. Yeah, it seems like they went to the well uh, one too many times on that play with the Tavares Talton running on that sweep uh, play action and, and Blanca was taken down in, in his own end zone. And that, that's, that's the difficult part of starting so deep within your own territory. You risk uh, giving up a safety. So a chance to maybe uh, change the game after they recovered a fumble instead on on the first play of that drive, uh, triple option, Fernando Blanco uh, decided uh, to take it himself, but instead he did not fool anybody as he was down into the end zone for a Citrus Hill safety. 9.34 to go, and right now Citrus Hill looking as if they might be in control in this, but for Tonkwitz right now, you can take this as a game of, of where they are here at this point, and they've really given giving it their all here tonight and uh you know the, the the scoreboard really says one thing but really the effort really says something else on the field right now yeah definitely talk with put forth so much effort against this team knowing that this team is the team to beat uh in this mountain pass league and both of them coming in fighting for the league championship that says a lot about this talk with team as well the effort they've been able to put forth this entire season uh, and especially in this game. Unfortunately for them, they've had a couple tough breaks, a few turnovers that have cost them and, ha and has put what the score is right now um, up to 40 points for uh, Citrus Hill. Definitely the most points they've given up all year since Myriad Mesa as well. Uh, and obviously their biggest deficit that they have faced all year long this deep into the game. 26 points down with about 9.30 to go here in this fourth and final quarter. And Citrus Hill again, uh, now they're starting this drive within uh, Talkwitz territory. Back in the shotgun here, Trevor Hodge, he'll take the snap, drop back to pass, looking for KJ Young with the diving catch, but could not retain possession. Wow, he definitely had that ball in his hands. He wasn't able to hold on to it. Um, big break there for Talkwitz because that would have been another touchdown on the board for the Hawks. KJ Young uh, showing off his hops and he actually had a beautiful chance of, uh, of a miraculous play but instead uh, it'll set up now second down and ten on the option. Trevor Hodge along the far side, inside the 15 and then taken out of bounds at about the 12. Again, the feet of Hodge, wrecking havoc against this Tockwitz defense. Yeah, again, uh, the Hawks here 
uh, asserting their dominance, wanting to let Talkwitz know, like, hey, we are the team to beat. We are the big dogs of this league. You're going to have to do a lot more to try to take us down. And that's what they're doing here tonight. Um, they've just been forcing the ball uh, down the field through Hodges' feet uh, for the most part of this game, and they've been very, very successful. First down and 10 inside the 15, looking for James Ooten. He makes the catch along the corner, and it's another Citrus Hill touchdown. James Ooten from about 15 yards, taking it to the house, and six more is on the board here for the Hawks. Yeah, and you can see that Hodge could do it all on his feet through the air. He was able to find his wide open receiver, Ooten, there in the corner of the end zone. Easy pass there for Hodge, and uh, putting up more points here for Citrus Hill and uh, basically making uh, making Talkwitz realize, hey, this is going to be really hard <laughs> to even try to come back. Kick is up here by Sendejas, and it is a good. After the safety, they get seven more points. And it's capped off there by the catch by James Ooten. 47-14, a 33-point deficit here for the Titans. We'll take a timeout here. This is Friday Night Football right here on PlayOnSports.com. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week. From your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Back in action here in this one, a 47-14 ball game here with Citrus Hill on top. And right now, again, uh, with the league title on the line, Citrus Hill uh, with a 33-point lead, looking as if uh, they might be the team in control. Uh, and they might be going for it back-to-back -back league titles here. Tim Neely here. With the return, he'll take it, try to take it the other side of the field, and instead it gets taken down. Uh, actually had a lot of room in front of him, but instead tried to take it up the middle, land right into the pile. Yeah, definitely, when he changed directions there, it looked like he was gonna try to come across the field again. He had tons of open field, but uh, I guess he missed that, that hole there, and he just tried to take it right back up the middle, and they, they, they took him down. So here comes this tight offense who, They've really not tried to find anything here. Uh, and it looks as if a new quarterback here, Nolan Valdez, will take the field here for the Titans. First down and 10 here. Valdez takes a snap, handing it off up to Peters. Peters gets taken down and looks as if it's, it's going to be behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of about a half, but nonetheless. Setting up here second down and long. Yeah, Peters was mauled on that play by like three defenders. They were able to, again, read that run very, very quickly. And uh, you can see the speed of this defense getting, getting them uh, in the backfield. Michael Stewart also getting a breather. He's on the field. Uh, looks as if part of the second string here is on the field for the Takwets offense. Derek Peters here again on the handoff. Letting a couple of tackles, great spin. But they're going to say that he was down. Uh, he was held long enough to be down there on the play. Gain of about two, now third down and nine. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Peters. He was able to spin away from that tackle at the end. Um, could have gotten some more yardage there, but the, the referees called it, stopped the play and called him down. Under eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Again, Valdez, the new quarterback here for the Titans. Neely here with the handoff. Gets tackled down at the 34-yard uh, line. Well short of a first down, and once again, the punting unit here for Talkwitz. Yeah, and uh, it looks like Talkwitz has, has been given uh, on this last drive their second string team a chance to get some playing time. Um, but again, Citrus Hill, their defense has just been incredible. They've been, they've been uh, able to keep this high-powered offense under control. Citrus Hill will let it go, and it takes a big Takwitz bounce. It's down at the 21-yard line. Citrus Hill's offense back up on the field. Keep it right here, 7.07 to go in the fourth quarter. 
Tokwitz here down by 33 points and uh, obviously it just seems as if they might be uh, waving the white flag right now. But at the same time, uh, you know, the effort, like I said, says one thing. Uh, it definitely says different on the score, but, but they've really kind of given it their all. They're just taking on a team right now that's obviously met their match. They've come, they came into this uh, with a lot of momentum, a lot of teams in their league, and even in their schedule. We're not expecting a, a team like Takowitz to play this tough. Obviously, Citrus still coming in more than well prepared. And right now, we're obviously seeing the better team in Citrus still, but at the same time, Takowitz, this is definitely not the team that, we, uh, that we've seen in, in, weeks, in weeks past. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, coming into the, in the season, nobody expected Takowitz um, to do as well as they have so far. You know, being 2-8 and eight last year, uh, it seems that, hey, you know, Takowitz isn't going to be really a contending team. But so far, we've seen greatness come from Takowitz on both defense and offense. And it's brought him to a 7-1 record, 3-0 and within league. Someone, a, a team that wasn't expected to be this great is here facing the giants of this league. Um, and definitely putting forth 110% effort. Couple of runs here by Citrus Hill. And now a little set up here, third down at about nine yards to go. First ring offense here for Citrus Hill, still is on the field. Back out of the hurry up. Bunch formation here. On the handoff, Takwood's defense Ending that drive rather quickly. And that'll bring back the punting unit. And uh, Citrus Hill, uh, I think, also getting getting their second string players a, a bit of a chance to get some playing time here. Uh, you had Jarrell Brown under center on that last play. Um, but that, that was a great stop by Talk with defense. Big, big tackle there. Immediately was able to bring their running back down, uh, forcing a fourth down punt here. So Takwitz here positioned to take the balls. They are set up at their own 45. Balls kicked away, signaling for the fair catch. Mytorius Boyd. 5.13 to go here. We'll take a timeout right now. 47 to 14 here with Citrus Hill on top. We'll take, again, a timeout here. Playonsports.com, your home for high school sports. Stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com postgame show, where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Yeah, you know, speaking of a uh, player of the game, and uh, this might be an easy choice here. Trevor Hodge here, I would say, is uh, I would say he might be the man of the hour here. And although he uh, doesn't have a lot of stats to show for. I mean, really, just the leadership, one thing, and uh, the way he's really commanded his offense definitely says another. Yeah, definitely. Trevor Hodge just ran rough shot all over this defense tonight. Uh, not only did he run the ball very well, he was able to air it out for, for a great touchdown pass. He was able to get some good plays uh, with his arm as well as his feet, and he was, he was very successful tonight, and, and he was able to keep that Citrus Hill offense on the field with those big gains on his feet. 4.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. Again, Nolan Valdez replacing Fernando Blanco in at quarterback. On second down and two. Jonte Price on the handoff. Shoestring tackled at the 40. Well enough for a first down, so that will move the chains. Obviously for Taco, it's going back to the drawing board. They'll head down to Beaumont next week. And depending on what... Uh, what Citrus Hill will do next week, their next opponent, as a matter of fact, will be against West Valley. Tokwitz can still get at least a share of a, win, of, of a league title if Citrus Hill does lose against West Valley next week. Valdez here on the quarterback keeper. Then he gets shouldered at the 30 yard line, but it's an 11 yard gain. Nice footwork there by Valdez. Yeah, Valdez, Valdez with a great run on that play, quarterback keeper, and he took a big hit and got right back up. That's what I like to see these kids, you know, putting forth that effort, take those big hits, and you know what? That's not going to keep me down. I'm going to keep going. We show toughness, and you definitely cannot teach that. At the 29-yard line here, clock ticking, 3.45 to go here in the fourth and final quarter. Valdez takes a snap, sweeps it back down to Peters. 
correction down to Neely. At the 22, taken down right there. Another big gain, seven yards to be exact. Yeah, now they're using uh, some of their other weapons. Tim Neely, normally you see him playing, uh, playing defensive back, but now you see him in the backfield here behind Valdez. So uh, they're definitely going to show, show us uh, what else they got in their playbook here. Obviously, with the, with the score, uh, with the gap this big here, with Citrus uh, Hill on top, uh, might as well show off some, uh, some back pages off of your playbook to see uh, what you can muster. Second down here and two. On the handoff here is Neely finding a hole. Diving down, rolling into about the 11-yard line. Another gain, moving the chain. Yeah, and Ely with another great run there. It was almost fell forward, was able to, you know, get his feet right back under him and was able to slide under what would have been a very, very, very big hit. Yeah, right now, Tim Neely so far, uh, and really the second string offense, uh, at least uh, showing off what they've got here in front of head coach Dennis Gregovich. Out of the no huddle, taking their time though. 2.28 and counting. Here is the, uh, Valdez on the run on the quarterback keeper. Running it inside the five, down to about the three. Yeah, and uh, and you, you can sense that talk with the saying, hey, we're not just gonna lay down and take it, you know, they still they still want to get some more points on the board before this one's over, and you can see that by the effort that the second string squad is putting forth on this drive. Injured player on the field, but he's taken off. Uh, as you can see, the second, uh, uh, one of the players over here for Citrus Hill limping off the sideline. Clock here now running, about under two to go here in the fourth quarter. Valdez back in position to take the snap here on the shotgun. Ball sweeped here to Neely. At the five and then gets tripped up behind the five down at the six. So that'll be a loss of about two. Third down and about four. They can still get the first down without scoring. But obviously here with two plays to go, they want to be getting into the end zone. Yeah, Tim Neely got really excited there. He saw, he saw the end zone in his sights. Um, he actually tripped over himself a little bit and uh, fell, fell in the backfield, but uh, he definitely definitely was looking to get into the end zone on that play. Valdez here sweeping it out to Neely up along the far side. Escapes a couple of tackles and then gets taken down at about the three at the two. Not sure if that might have crossed the first down marker. It's fourth and inches. Maybe not inches, if not about a full yard. They will go for it, under a minute to go. Chance to maybe put up one more score before the end of this ball game. Valdez here taking his time. And I think they might call time. No, they're actually gonna let it go there. They have two timeouts left in their pocket. And they're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Here's Neely on the handoff. And he'll take it in the end zone for six points. Yeah, great run there by Neely, right up the middle, untouched into the end zone. Great touchdown there for the second string squad. And as I said, they're not gonna go, they're not just gonna lay themselves down here for Citrus. So you definitely wanna go out with pride, with honor, showing that you're gonna put in that 110% effort, even if you're down big. 31 seconds to go, a 27 point ball game now. Snap, hold, kick is up, and it's good. Penning extra point, it will fall through. A 26-point lead now, 31 ticks left. Uh, obviously, the game uh, all but over right now, but really, uh, right now for Citrus Hill, uh, definitely going to enjoy this victory tonight. Yeah, definitely, Citrus Hill, th this basically means they're going to get, they've won, you know, two consecutive league championships barring a loss for them next week against West Valley. But uh, definitely, you got you got to give a lot of credit to this Hawkwoods defense. Um, they did a pretty great job against this really um, strong running game that Citrus Hill has. 
Uh, unfortunately for Talkwitz, those turnovers killed them in this game. They had about five, six turnovers, and y you hardly will ever win a game with that many turnovers. Yeah, really, if you look at the scoreboard, it's 21 unanswered points. It would definitely be a different ball game, and maybe Talkwitz would have a chance to kind of stay within reach. But uh, again, two, uh, three interceptions and then a fumble about half of them coming, about three or four coming into the second half, and that was really the momentum killer, and especially that safety as well. Ball will bounce into the end zone here for a touchback. It'll be taken down at the 20, and I believe Citrus Hill will probably take one more knee to end this ball game. Citrus Hill will improve to 4-0, and 9-0 and overall. They will take at least a share of a Mount Pax League title Barring a loss against West Valley next week, they can win it outright. But Tonkwitz, again, give a bunch of credit to this team, a team that started off 2-8. and eight. They are 7-2 and two now as they, they'll take the loss right here. They still got a lot riding on them. They've obviously made the playoffs. They're not done yet, folks. Yeah, they definitely... Uh they're going to be 7-2 and two going into their their final game of the season against Beaumont next week. You know that they're going to it'd be great for them to reverse that record from last year. They were 2-8 and eight last year. Definitely would be great for them to make it 8-2 and two this year. Um, but this is definitely preparing them for the playoffs coming forward. They already clinched the playoffs. And so you know it's like, hey, we're going to be facing teams like Citrus Hill. We need to prepare better. We need to be ready for that. We need our defense to be ready for that. And um, they need to get Blanco calm down just a little bit get him that confidence but they need to work on his accuracy just a little bit to avoid those interceptions those turnovers that cost him this game obviously look at next week too here for Tockwitz. uh they fall to three and one in league play and maybe you know they might be fine fine for home field in the first round uh a three and two record might be good for around third place and uh obviously a third place team could have him start the, on the road in the first round of the playoffs obviously uh, the home the home side's different in the second and third rounds, but you want to at least be the team to start off the playoffs at home. Yeah, absolutely. Home field advantage. It's called a home field advantage for a reason. You have the advantage over the other team. You've got the crowd behind you. You've got that extra, that slight extra momentum going into that game, um, knowing that you're at home. But uh, this is something that Talkwitz is is going to be excited about the fact that they're in the playoffs after uh, a two and eight season last year. Yeah, definitely very excited, but they've still got work to do. They've got something to play for for next week, and obviously their season will extend after November 2nd. But nonetheless, we got one more game next week. We'll have our player of the game interview and Trevor Hodge up in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is Friday Night Football, football right here on Play On Sports. <laughs> Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort.
player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. This. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Wiley Ballard uh, graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP.
Welcome back here to PlayOutSports.com and our player of the game here, Trevor Hodge. A couple of rushing touchdowns and obviously uh, a big win over Talkwitz, 47-21, at least a share of a league title. First of all, you know, going 9-0 and getting that share of a league title, first of all, tell me, how does it feel to be winning back-to-back -back league titles? Back-to-back -back league titles feel good, you know. Um, we just got to keep continue to work and everything, the drive, the motivation, everything, it just all happens within, within us, so... You just got to get it. You just got to work hard. Yeah, definitely a team like this. You guys have a lot of discipline. We did talk about this uh, coming up here. Obviously, a team like Takwitz, who, you know, they've really, you know, done a complete turnaround, finishing 2-8 and eight last year. Uh, they really brought everything tonight. And we talked about how, you know, there were mistakes that we didn't see. But uh, in, your, in your aspect, uh, you know, in a game like this where, you know, mistakes were kind of few and far between from you guys, you guys took actually advantage of, of the Takwitz mistakes, and you guys turned them up big. So what what was the, the thought of this week as you guys were preparing against Takwitz? What was your mindset going into this week to get you guys ready for a game like this? Our mindset was just to, to figure out who their key players was, manage, manage our offense, manage our defense, and whatever they throw at us, we just had to continue and just on a – just – you know, just you just had to got to play the game. You know what I'm saying? You got to play the game, understand what you're doing, and just read your keys. And you know, a program like you guys, where you're taking on teams that are, you know, that are fairly new into the football program, but you know, being one of the top teams in the east in the Eastern Division, uh, uh, obviously one of the big firepowers, all of CIF as well. I mean, what what has kept you guys going in week in and week out? Where you guys have been kind of the just b basically the team to beat over the last couple of years. I mean, what have you guys done to really keep that hype uh, week in and week out? Working hard, Kozo, Kozo doesn't let us let us stop any minute. Any minute, we just got to keep going hard, keep going hard, and everything in practice shows. And if you don't practice hard, it shows it on the field. Yeah, talk, talk, definitely talking about a team like this. Obviously, trying to go for another CIF title. One week to go as you guys take on West Valley next week uh, before the playoffs. You guys still have something to play for, and that's definitely a top seed. So with one week to go, and we did talk about this, uh, what needs to kind of fix up before you guys get ready for the CIF playoffs going on in two weeks? Fix up the uh, – we got to fix up our O-line. We got to get our focus right. Um, we got to read our keys, our – our offense is just, it got to revolve around us. We can't be individuals. We got to be a team. So, you know, we just got to come out here and work hard back in, back at home at Citrus Hill and come back out next week Friday and let's take it home. A chance to go 10-0 and 0 and possibly win 22 out of 23 to finish off the regular season. Once again, Citrus Hill winners over Takowitz. They'll take a share of at least a league title and they'll win it, try to win it outright next week at home against West Valley. From all of us here at PlayOutSports.com, we're signing off here. See you ne out next week where Takowitz will take on Beaumont over in Beaumont, California. Good night, everybody. We'll see you back next Friday night. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. This.